In the 21st century, there's no escaping the cult of celebrity. This old woman in Sainsbury's turned around and said, I knew it was you. I recognised your breathing. Idolised by adoring fans. There's nothing more fun than being famous. Celebs enjoy living in the lap of luxury. I feel like my eyelashes are coming off. Oh, no, they're not. I want to find out what happens when they're stripped of the trappings of fame. I've always got a fresh mani-pedi. People might think, oh, she doesn't want to get her hands dirty, but I will. And left to fend for themselves. Is this a good idea? I don't know if I want to do this, you know. <laughs> for the next four weeks, I'm abandoning ten celebrities. 8,000 miles from home on a remote Pacific island. Ah! Help us! With just the clothes on their back, you don't know you've lived until you've shit in the sea and then that swim away from it. And a few basic tools. Anthony! Come on! I'm going for the big stuff. I'm going for crocodiles. They'll only eat what they can catch and kill. Why is this happening when we're top left? I think I'm going to die on this island. <laughs> Quick! She's trapped! Use <laughs> your knife! Pitted against the forces of nature. It's a knife injury. It looks like it's his entire finger. As tropical storm season rages around them... Montana's got swimming goggles to protect her eyelashes. They've got to be protected. Going great. Oh, wow. Gnarly, dude. Welcome to papaya. <laughs> yeah! Tastes like a rubber johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting away. We're dead and this is a dream. Stop talking. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. Pushed to the limits of human endurance. <laughs> Do you think I want to be in this position? Who will have the grit and determination to survive? These ten celebrities are about to face four of the toughest weeks of their lives. Five minutes, we're getting close. I have zero survival experience, but it's about proving something to myself. I want to know that I've got the bollocks to do it, basically. Because of the characters that I've played, people think I'm the hard man, and that's a million miles away from me going to the island. I think it's to test myself. Game head on, guys. Game head on. When I first transitioned, people would shout, you tranny, on the island. I want to feel part of something. I want to feel accepted. I'm going to get you in as close as I can, but you are going to be swimming. Two beaches. Two beaches. I've made hundreds of movies, but my vocation is nothing like surviving on the island. And then this is it. Oh, God. The north side of the island is surrounded by a rocky reef, so this is as close as I can get the celebrities to shore. That's pushing, that's swimming. We had to swim ashore? Are you kidding? Yeah, and I've drowned. They drop us here. We're going to be safe. <laughs> <coughs> This is going to be a tough four weeks. Survival always hurts. But for those that endure, survival also rewards. You ready for this? Yeah. yeah. Spread out the gear. Remember, it floats. OK, let's go. You're really not very confident, sort of. Me. Okay. You keep holding that one, yeah? I've provided the group with a handful of basic tools, fishing equipment, and three jerry cans of water. Eric, you okay down there? No. The currents around here are fierce. This is their time to work together, work fast, and get in. Keep going. Keep going. Keep kicking. Keep kicking. 20 seconds, let me just stand up. Can you stand yet? 
here. Oh. This is work. This journey of being stripped bare begins now. For the next 28 days, the celebrities will depend on each other for their survival. Have I made it? Along with four trained camera operators, the group are now completely alone. We've got to sort out of knives in the boxes, and there's a whole pile of rubbish over here that we can rummage through. Guys, pillows. Sweet. I've got some shampoo. That's all we need. Listen, this will be a piece of piss now. I've got shampoo. What do you think about the amount of stuff that washes up on these beaches? It's disgusting, baby. But you know what? It's good for us. I've been nominated for an Academy Award, three Golden Gloves, and I've had so much fun I can't see straight. My sister Julia, she did it with Bear, and she said it was the best experience of her life. The reason I'm going to the island is because when I'm at home, my wife tells me what to do. Don't, don't, don't do anything. When I'm at work, my director tells me what to do. So I don't have to think for myself, pretty much. On this island, if I don't think for myself, I'll be kind of screwed. I want to show you something. Look at this. I just put my hand on that. Wow, gnarly, dude. Oh, my hip is killing me. Oh. I mean, he's struggling because, listen, Eric's a hero. He had a hip replacement six weeks ago, and I can't believe he's here. It was rough. I got, I got saved by a, by a teammate. Yeah, Sam, uh, Sam did all the work. You know what? I have his name wrong. What's his name? Martin. Martin Kemp. You got actor. Have you seen anything that Martin's in? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, what's his name? Uh, Martin Kemp. Martin Kemp saved my ass because my clothes and my, and my shoes are too heavy for my, for my new hip, so I was kind of struggling. He pulled me in. Martin, thank you, pal. No problem, man. I turned down celebrities to come down with me for this. I could have been at home with, like, scented candles and a roux sauce. Sand in my crap. I don't even know how that's possible. It's right up Oh! That's heavy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Montana okay, looks like Naomi Campbell. The tide's coming up, look. The water's coming in, so... We need to move. This whole beach is going to disappear. We need to move everything and take it up off the beach. OK. I reckon that beach is over there, just over that ridge. Towie star Pete has spotted somewhere he thinks the group should camp for the night. This bit that points out, which has got a yeah. cove the other side. I can run and have a look, can't I? And boxer Anthony heads off to investigate. Woo! We're not going to get round there anyway, are we? Because some of us can't swim. Anthony! Anthony! The tide's coming in. Come quick, mate. Yeah, let's get going. Not all of us will be able to get round that from via the water. So we're going to head up that way and round yeah. and in, really, to find where uh, it looks like a nice place we can rest, depending on how far that is. Well, I'm a bit fucked already, to be honest with you. First impressions when people see me is probably the look, the geezer's got long hair, he's covered in tattoos, he's from Essex, he's got a tan, he's probably a donut. I need to prove that I ain't the geezer that everyone thinks I am. I made of strong stuff. The island, it's physically, mentally, emotionally going to challenge me to my limit. It's really going to allow me to judge for myself what the measure of me as a man is. If I'm honest, if they want to make me king of the island, I don't mind. I don't need a crown. Just the title. Guys, we ready? Yeah. I'll try and lead the way. Forced off the beach by the rising tide, Pete hopes to lead the group through the jungle to find a more suitable place to camp. So much gear. <laughs> it's the water cans that wear a ton. Hold on. Is that heavy? The jerry can, they're harder to carry. You won't want to carry all of that because the ground's rough. I reckon we leave a couple of lots of water here and then we might be able to get the water again tonight. We'll leave two somewhere safe. On the island, water is an extremely valuable resource. But Pete decides to leave two jerry cans behind. Do you want to mark that? What do you want me to do? Put a big arrow on it? This will be fine. <laughs> Someone should take it. 
I don't want people to get lost when they have to go find those water cans. It'll be fine. Right, now you're heading through here. Surreal. I'm not really an outdoor girl. I like my showers and I like my fluffy towels and... I'm at one with nature now. We need to move quick now. Yeah, big a move on. It's going to get a bit dust, isn't it? It's going to lose light. If they don't find somewhere to camp soon, the group risk spending the night in the jungle. Is that a scorpion? Oh, shit. Do I? Good. Jesus. Look at this spiky thing. Wow. Yeah, Look at that. Woo! Oh, why am I so bad with using a machete? Anyone with a machete needs to come to the front a bit. Yeah, we'll leave that. We'll leave that for today. Is it this way? Um, is it that way? No. There we go. Is this way? Boys, this is hard to find out where you're going. When we get back, Pete, I'm going to get you to do the voiceover for my sat now. I think this is the fucking way. <laughs> hey, good going, Pete. On the scale of one to ten, you're batting a thousand. He's um, taking charge, I think we all wanted and needed. And I think he's got a whole group of uh, loyal disciples. This is like the ultimate Stairmaster at the gym, isn't it? Not that I go to the gym, but I imagine it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first workout I've ever done. How come you've got a decent, how come you've got an average body? <clears throat> lads, 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 lads. I can see the beach! Yay! There we are. Yes, babe! Yeah! Down there. Oh, a jacuzzi and a jug of margaritas. Oh, Pete, it's paradise. Great clearing right here, guys. Woo! Well done, Pete. Pete, thank you. So this is basically, this is home for the next month. <laughs> Smashed it. Pete has been amazing. I think I assumed that he wouldn't be as hard working, but he's such a grinder. It's an amazing feeling. Personally, for me, because I do feel like I'm now sort of in charge, if you like. Right, I'm going to go back in and get some trees. Pete gets to work constructing a shelter for the group. Hey! Ha! Ha! Yeah! You're dead. You're bleeding. I got it. My man. We've got to get some fire going, because we haven't got that much light left. It might be to be too wet, the wood. Is that burning or not? Eh? No, I think we did. Oh, no, it's not, is it? It gets dark quick. So I'm hoping these boys with a fire, actually, if they do that, that's an absolute touch for us. This is good, you can do Four. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's all yours, James. Oh, my God, it's guys, 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 guys! <laughs> be calm, girls. Wait, 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 wait. Be careful there. Out of the way, out of the way. Out of the way, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Captain, Captain! My man crack yeah. <laughs> That was something that I never thought was going to happen. All credit to Cracknell. Well done, James. The islanders have sorted fire and a basic shelter, but the one jerry can of water they brought with them is running out fast. We need water quickish, so we need to do that first thing. I reckon a group of two can go after looking for water. Pete, hey, we've got to go and get the jerry can. Speak up, speak up. What? Colin, Colin, speak up. More important, bring back Colin, one. speak up. Who's Colin? Martin. Martin, speak up. <laughs> he looks like a Colin to me. Martin, <laughs> speak up. <laughs> I'll have you know that's Martin Kemp from Spandau Ballet, not Colin. Um, right. Martin, let's, we're going to get one jerry can. <laughs> right. <Jerry>. And... <laughs> <laughs> I like this group a lot. And, uh, I don't usually like groups. It's a great one. I thought we were going to have a miserable, miserable night. <laughs> Look at us. If this is the worst day, we are on Happy Street, I tell you. <laughs> on the level, guys, who said the first night was going to be the hardest? Bear Grylls. What does Bear Grylls know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
people. Oh my god. I'm soaked and I'm freezing to death. Come on, guys. Wow, this super sucks. That fire wouldn't be fucked. Bloody hell! Oh, God. Keep, keep calm. Keep calm. Oh, this is bad, isn't it? I've marooned ten celebrities on a remote Pacific island. And now they're enduring their first tropical downpour. We haven't really got a proper shelter, which has collapsed. We just haven't really thought this through. I'm really getting cold. Where it is raining at the minute, we can't keep the fire going. I think it's going to be a real struggle to get another one going tomorrow because everything is going to be drenched. Tomorrow's going to be horrible. Oh my God, look at the camp. Everything's just sudden, mate. Right? I got a lot of bug action in there last night. At least it's some sort of action. It's a good attitude. <laughs> last night was surreal. It was like a bad dream, wasn't it? This is, like, actually a different planet. Like, I thought it was going to be hard, but, like, this is, like, next level. We're up all night. Just keeping the fire going. Because if we'd lost the fire, we'd have been right up Shit Creek. Everybody's feet and hands are like shriveled little sausages that have turned white, which I believe is the start of trench foot. Oh, oh, oh your poor feet, honey. I can't even this tell you. This looks bad. Oh, baby. This just. Oh, honey. I don't like looking at that. As long as I don't get trench fairy. Oh, stop it. Pete's decision to leave two jerry cans of water behind was a gamble. But the storm should have provided the group with the opportunity to replenish their water supply. Last night with the rain, we basically got a handful of piss. The problem we've got now is we're all tired, we're all dehydrated and everything else. Pete leaving those water cans behind was a really bad idea. No, it's my fault. But we need water. So every, every group that's out is looking for water. Let's do it. Oh. Oh, oh, yep, there we go, there we go. We're a little bit left in there now. Right, we are ready to go then. Pete decides to send out two teams. Olympians Anthony and James set off to retrieve the jerry cans. Jerry cans are important. So, oh, it's our water, it's our water, because we haven't found any water yet, it's our water supply. You ready? Go. You guys in a bit. While Pete and Paris will scour the island for a sustainable water source. I felt a bump in the night. I turned around and I realised it was Julia Roberts' brother's big toe in the small of my back. <laughs> so here we are. I don't think I was going to like you. I thought you were just going to be some trashy reality TV guy. Everyone, sadly, judges people automatically, don't they? It smell damp. Be as quiet as we can as we're walking. You might hear a trickle, you might hear any... I don't know, anything. You might hear an animal. Loads of birds around here. Birds mean you get to eat. More so that birds is also water. Along with vegetation and wildlife, I've ensured there's enough water on the island to keep them alive. But only if they have the ingenuity to find it. Well, look, this is brilliant. This is a gutter. If we follow it up, hopefully we'll find a water source. I don't know. It's a little like we're having any joy. End. Or maybe not. Oh, my head is throbbing. I think I might be dehydrated. Remember, that's all we've got now. Mm. It's important to me to try and find water today, so I don't want to stop. I just want to keep going. Um, yeah, so. Woo! We're on that beach where we got dropped off yesterday, yeah? I don't think this was the beach. Fuck off. Not the one we all came in on. We lost! Having set out to retrieve the jerry cans, James and Anthony have overshot the arrival beach and ended up on the other side of the island. OK, it might be in here then, yeah? It's got to be, surely. Carl Lewis job? <laughs> yeah, let's scramble up.
Right, let's go. There's one rock when you come out. It's quite loose, so don't grab it. And when you put your foot there, it looks a bit weak, that bit. You all right, Joe? Not really. See that big wood thing above you? Grab it carefully. Oh, Joe, there's a couple of good tree roots there. Yeah. Um. Happy days. Hang on. Look down there. It's, I've got our footprints, man. That doesn't make sense. We're literally going around in circles. Ah. Oh. We're in a flipping parallel universe. Is there any more water? There's a little bit in there. Oh. Back at camp, the one jerry can of water is running low. I'll never complain again about being thirsty because this is thirsty. <sighs> Waiting for the boys to come back with some water, but we've almost got no water left here, though. Looking back on it, retrospective, yesterday we should have just taken the other two jerry cans and that would have been safer, but we didn't. <laughs> have we got a water drinking bottle handy? Oh, we've only got a little bit of that left. I'm dying of thirst right now. So that was the last of the water. We've got no water now. Got no yeah. water. When I saw Eric drink the last of the jerry can, I felt shocked. Eric drank the whole bottle. He guzzled it down. Ant and uh, James went out to pick up the jerry can we left behind yesterday that was filled with water, but that was stuck in hours ago. So. No water. We've been trekking for ages. Almost three hours into their trek, Pete and Paris have failed to find a water source. For two days, I've worked my nuts off and I've, I've, I feel like I'm going to collapse in a minute. I can't take this. I've got to start. I've got to. Oh, shit. You all right? No. So we need to step it up, though. I know, but I'm going under, Pete. We are... I'm, I'm going to... a nervous breakdown. I'll find this fucking water if it kills me. <sighs> Do you want a bit? I would stop drinking the water because we're not... Okay. We haven't got much left at all. This way... Hang on a minute. That looks like a fucking beach. The complete opposite end of the island. Are you kidding me? Pete and Paris have headed south through some of the island's thickest jungle and are now on the west side of the island. We've got no water left. Oh, shit. I think we've got to, we've got to get back, cos I'm not, I'm not getting stuck in this. I think it could be a bit dangerous. Genuinely, this, this sun is so hot, and we don't have any water. How did we get lost so badly? Stop it. Bloody hell! I know, it's, uh, Yeah. James and Anthony have been searching for the two abandoned jerry cans of water for more than three hours. We're dead and this is a dream. I think it's time to cut our losses. Uh, let's just think about getting back to camp. I'd... Hang on. What? What's up? Oh. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The holy grail. Well done, boys. Oh. Now, don't drink it all at once, OK? <laughs> you know, if we hadn't found them, we'd have had to do such the walk of shame back into camp. And we've still got to get back! <laughs> we've had to... With heavy jerry cans. There's no water on this fucking island. Over three hours into Pete and Paris's search for a water source, they have nothing to drink and are now lost. Get down that way. Oh. Or down that way. I'm a bit worried about getting back to camp. We're all hot and dehydrated and we have no water left. Oh. I physically can't take another step. This is really hard. Hello? 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 Who's that? It's Pete! Who's that? 
It's James and Elton. We, we, we are in desperate need of water. You got the jerry cans? Tell, yeah, I've got them. They've got the water. Oh, uh, thank God. Oh, fucking hell, I need some water, man. Yeah. Uh. Hey, we've literally just thank fuck we found you. We ran out of water. We had to start heading back. Yeah. Uh. Thank you. You need a water source. I think I trusted you to start off with. And I think you've let me down like every other man in my life. None of us have found this easy. Like these guys have said, they've been lost. Yeah. I feel like E.T. Ouch. I've just put pseudocream on my minge, but now I'm sunburnt too. Yeah. Oh, my God, the boys are back. Oh, thank God. Why has it taken them four hours? Even though they've successfully retrieved both jerry cans, it's a short-term solution. In 35-degree heat and around 90% humidity, the water will last the islanders less than a day. I can't make another trip like that today. It's taking it out of me, so I ain't that fucking good, am I? He maybe wants to be Superman too much. He wants to do everything, and I think he's now paying for it. He's been quiet, he's just hit a brick wall. I'm all right hunger-wise, I just need water. You need the water. Without this, we've all we found. What I'd give for a lime and soda with ice cubes. Oh! Do you know what I'm craving right now? An elderflower and sparkling water. Good morning. Somebody's sauce got burned. Fuck's sake. Watch your language, it's a family show. I feel like we're on an all inclusive and we're a family. She's the worst all inclusive for having to eat or drink. <laughs> Non inclusive. <laughs> Anyone feeling dizzy or anything on standing up? I'm feeling slow, lethargic. With lack of water a concern, Dr. Salia is carrying out medical checks. Everyone peed? Yeah, I did. Pete, have you peed? I've only had one piss since I've been here. You're joking. No way. That's not enough. He's sweating it all out. OK, that's a little bit worrying. You're not drinking enough. Pete. Water is on its way. The group are now all dehydrated, so Martin and Salia head off in search of a fresh water source. You have to find it. You can't not find it. It is bloody serious. I'm exhausted, are you? Yeah. I'm exhausted. Oh, mum. Because we're getting tired. I don't think it's actually happening this way, to be honest with you. It just looks so dry. I think we should go back. Hold on. Over here. Here we go. Oh, my God. It's not sore. But it looks a bit like... Yeah, it's not going to look like Evian. We've got to filter it, but I think that's it. This is amazing! Oh, my God! Oh, wow! So, which way's home? Home is that way. I've got the old Kemp luck. You have! <laughs> Guys! We got it! What? We found water! They found water! Woo! <laughs> Give me some! Ah. Mm. Oh, my God. Martin Kemp never fails, does he? That is brilliant. I can't tell you how much I needed that. That's heaven. God. Rocks! Rocks! Ah, I'm coming! Now they've found a sustainable water source, the islanders can focus on feeding themselves. Found a big juicy one. Is it another limpet? Since arriving on the island, the group have had only hermit crabs and coconut to eat. It's been a bit of a tight ass. Right, let's batter the bastard. Give it a poke. Oh, my God, he's got a fucking eyeball and he's looking at me! If I had food in me, I'd shit myself. A yeah. silly cow, honestly. <laughs> The closest I've come to achieving survival experience was when I had to milk a goat on Emmerdale. My skills. Hmm. 
If somebody got stung by a jellyfish, I would wee on them. Is that a skill? <laughs> I never even went camping as a child. I've never been to Glastonbury. Hiya, ma'am. I've just been to the chippy. <laughs> ma'am! <laughs> I won't be the strongest and I won't be the toughest, but I think my sense of humour could be my fuel to get through the island. Are you going to eat that? Babe, we don't have a kebab shop down the road. We don't have much choice. I didn't think I'd be hunting for food like this. I feel like a proper caveman. I've got a newfound respect for cave people. Beautiful. You're very at home in the outdoors. Really? You look like you've just shot a music video on the beach, and I look like I've been washed up on a fucking beach. No, you don't. Well done, babe. Well done to you. The limpets will provide the celebrities with a small hit of protein, vitamins and iron. But such a small amount won't sustain them for long. You know what, I was so excited when we first found limpets. I was like, yeah, it's going to be amazing. I ate the shit sack, which tastes like shit. And then it was gone in about two seconds. Tastes like a rubber johnny. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to chew them, Joe. <laughs> try, try and eat it. Babe, this is not food. I One don't more. even got your sushi. Do you not? No. Oh, honestly, what I'd do for a shag right now. I could be in bed with my beautiful boyfriend. And so could you. I know. What, with your beautiful boyfriend? <laughs> Mine's a threesome's babe. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at the size of these guys. Wow. Look at the size of these guys. some Tommy Hilfiger ones here. It doesn't matter where you are, socks and sandals is never a good idea. <laughs> that says a lot, doesn't it? About my sense of style. It's hard to not worry about how you look. In the world that I live in especially, it's all about kind of beauty and glamour and looking good all the time. I haven't had a shower in like three or four days, like sand all over my nipples. My nipples are exfoliated to shit. I'll be surprised if I've got any nipple left by the time I leave. I don't care who's got their cock out or who's got their tits out. All I'm interested in is playing with my bit of wood. Having failed to locate the water source... I'm going to try a bit of spearfishing. ..Peter's determined to land the group their first fish supper. My nickname's Fish Boy. Not the best nickname. Like, I could have been Aqua Boy or Nautical whatever. Fish Boy sounds a bit shit. But I can't graduate to Fish Man until I get one. No one wants to be a boy, but you've just got to prove you're a man. Oh, my God! Pete! Pete! Oh, oh. Hold on. It's a fish, it's a fish. Okay, we should put our tops back Why in. the fuck? Why is this happening when we're toppling? Hold on. Just got to stay as calm and still as possible. It's gone. Easy how? I just find it really frustrating. But what can you do? I don't feel as useful as what I could be. Oh. I'm not made for opening coconuts. What's the matter, baby? No, it's not my name. Will you open my coconut for me, please? No. <laughs> I need to sharpen it anyway. You hear it banging on it like a hammer. Here we go. I've turned into some Amazonian ninja woman that I just don't care anymore about how I look or the state of my hair. Are you saying that for us or the camera? <laughs> I'd love him to just crack me open a coconut. Eric doesn't seem to have any tact. He's just so rude. He's not really a team player, if I'm being honest. I think I'm fitting in OK. Uh, I don't have any enemies, anyway. I think he's a funny old man. He says the most annoying things, but I do like Eric, as potty as he is. Check us out, baby. It's some kind of snake. See the fangs? You got them? And look at the backbone. A little show and tell. Cool, huh? 
trying to fix this net, which is really badly broken, actually. The group have found a fishing net washed up on the rocks, and Montana, Roxanne and Joe are hoping it will supply some much-needed sustenance. We have high hopes. Let's go. Guys, pray. Right. Rocks, do you want to swim it out? OK. Oh, my God. I actually just saw a bollock. I saw a bollock. He's got a really small ass. I can't take, that, take back what I just saw. With more than 500 species of edible fish, these tropical waters could be the group's biggest source of food. But they can also be treacherous, with strong currents, toxic puffer fish and sharks. Fucking hell. Something's gone wrong. <laughs> The net. Gives you knife. Oh, God. Right, she's all right. My feet were like that. I couldn't, I wouldn't even kick. He's deep. He's deep out there. You're all right, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for You're all right, though? Yeah, it's just horrible. You know what? It doesn't matter how strong a swimmer you are. I know. When you get caught on sand in water, it's so easy to panic, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my God. The island is brutal. It's taken everything I've got. I can't do it. You can do it. That's the thing. It's tough. Yeah. Everyone can be happy when everything's going for them. It's, it's, it's how you cope when, when the shit is the fun, and now nah, it's getting a bit real. I'm so scared, and it's heightened. It, it really is. Um, I just want to... I just want to last the whole way, no matter what. But for me, it's not the physical challenge as much as it is the mental challenge. Involved in a house fire years ago. And then when you're just in there, it's raining and smoke's going through, this fire, I think it started bringing stuff back. So. Wow, I feel so bad, man. I had no idea. I was lying next to Roxy, and I could see she was shivering, and she just broke down. She was a quivering wreck. If you have a bad memory inside, the smallest thing can set it off. And if she's been faced with that fire smell, that takes her back there. It's pretty hard. I feel shit. I know, this is tough and awful. 
On the beach, Roxanne calls my safety team. Hello, Roxanne, are you OK? I'm really suffering. I'm really struggling with my thoughts. Please, can you come and get me now? Being here, it was just damaging. You gotta stay, baby. I cannot cop. Enough's enough. Listen, we all know how hard this is. You know, this is not an easy thing to do. We, we all understand that, yeah. Yeah, really true. We all understand that. I'm gonna miss you guys. Thank you for everything. Honestly, you helped us do it together. I never thought coming on this island would almost open up a box that I'd tucked away in the back of my mind 20 years ago. The smoke was so thick and it was stinging my eyes. And just kept thinking about that night when we were trapped in our home and we couldn't take another breath in because every breath of smoke was like the last. It brings back really horrible memories. With her decision made, my team arrived to take Roxanne off the island. That story, when's the movie coming out? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Still, like, can't believe that. That bitch. How dare she? She's having room service back at her hotel whilst we're having snails. Back to work. Now everyone's hungry. Uh, I look like a lobster myself. Maybe you ought to take a bite out of me. Don't tempt me, Joe, because a couple of days and I reckon I will be having a fart in your ass. <laughs> the group have barely eaten in four days. Okay, Joe. Do you know the lines in the hooks are? And Eric is determined to catch something to eat. Be careful with that fishing line, though. OK. I'm going fishing. Where's a good fishing spot? Oh, damn. Oh, look at that. Who? 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 Oh, no. Hey, Joe. I got the uh, hook. Hook's on a rock. I'm going to lose a hook. Can't believe it. Don't throw that line away. It's hooked on a rock. I can't get it up. It's why I broke the rod. We've got no more line. Boys are going to be furious. Damn it. Well, I fucked that up royally, Pete. How? Get it hooked around a rock, broke the line and everything. We've got no fucking line. That's why we have to be careful with it. I can't hear you, Pete, talking away from me. Yes, because I'm going to get something. I'll be back. Hey, Pete. No, no, I'm just going to get something. I'll be back. OK. I'm losing my temper quick today. I'm oh, yeah. fed up with people. People are cracking. I'm quietly cracking. I had a major mistake today. It's getting hard. I miss my wife. Eric's just lost the bottom line. Who's that? Eric. No. Fucking idiot. I would really like to, to, to catch some fish today so that we can have a big meal tonight. But I'm exhausted. Eric, he takes a couple of 20-minute naps during the day. And he's just pretty useless. Anyone want to do a fish prayer? You are going to get fish. You will be calling me Captain Birdseye for the rest of the time I'm here. Either that or just knobhead. With the light fading... Good luck, Pete. Pete heads out into the water. Go on, Pete. I've got a huge stingray. Stingray? Not that one. Good work, guys. Oh, he 
is incredible. Look at that. Yes! Catching the stingray is one of the biggest buzzes I've had in my life. Oh my god! I feel like I'm gonna cry! You ready for some stingray? Shove it on the Barbie. Man, you done well there, man. Sizzling. It's our first meal. It was fabulous. Our morale seems to be a bit higher. We've all been working so hard to have actually been the ones to bring home dinner. It makes me feel fucking good, I'll be honest with you. Woo! Woo! You're losing the fire! Leave it now, leave it now! Next time on the island. I need kindling. Where is it? In the fucking woods! I'm not doing things when you ask me like that. I think we could be in worlds of bother if we don't get anything from this. Ow! Stop fucking talking. Talking does fuck all. Do it. First century, there's no escaping the cult of celebrity. This old woman in Sainsbury's turned around and said, I knew it was you, I recognised your breathing. Idolised by adoring fans. There's nothing more fun than being famous. Celebs enjoy living in the lap of luxury. I feel like my eyelashes are coming off. Oh, no, they're not. I want to find out what happens when they're stripped of the trappings of fame. I've always got a fresh mani-pedi. People might think, oh, she doesn't want to get her hands dirty, but I will. And left to fend for themselves. Is this a good idea? I don't know if I want to do this, you know. <laughs> for the next four weeks, I'm abandoning ten celebrities. 8,000 miles from home on a remote Pacific island. With just the clothes on their back. I mean, you don't know you've lived until you've shit in the sea and then that swim away from here. And a few basic tools. Anthony! Come on! I'm going for the big stuff. I'm going for crocodiles. They'll only eat what they can catch and kill. How is this happening when we're topless? I think I'm going to die on this island. Ah! <laughs> Quick! She's trapped! Ah! Use your knife! Pitted against the forces of nature. It's a knife injury. It looks like it's his entire finger. As tropical storm season rages around them... Montana's got swimming goggles to protect her eyelashes. They've got to be protected. Going great. Oh, wow. Gnarly, dude. Welcome to the fire. <laughs> yeah! Tastes like a rubber johnny. <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting away. We're dead and this is a dream. Stop talking. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. Pushed to the limits of human endurance. <laughs> do you think I want to be in this position? Who will have the grit and determination to survive? Ow! I can see the beach! Five days ago, ten celebrities were marooned on a remote Pacific island. We need to move quick now. With the group on the verge of dehydration, Pete led a trek into the jungle. We are in desperate need of water. Oh, my God. And got lost for over five hours. I physically can't take another step. Pushed to the edge by the extreme environment, one of the celebrities has already quit. Please, can you come and get me now? And as hunger kicked in, Pete provided the group with their first meal. Yes! Oh, it's incredible. I have saw in here where the sand was rubbing. In where? As we would say at home, cookie. What do you call it? Azus? Azusa? We're talking about. Girls bits. Oh. Swoosh. <laughs> Swoosh. 
And the male version is Abaduk. Abaduk. We have Abaduks. Abaduk. She has a swoon. <laughs> God. <laughs> See, the thing with being trans, from like some people, you tell them straight away, and they'll be like, "Oh, did you get your bits chopped off?" Some people would say that I'm not a real woman. Well, your tits would woman. argue otherwise. <laughs> I thought Paris was a chick, and in, and in Paris's words, she is a chick. But I thought she's a chick by birth. And uh, I had no idea. And because uh, of her voice, because she has a very feminine, nice neck with no Adam's apple. So I asked her, did you go the whole nine yards and have the operation? See, that's an invasive question, isn't it? Is Find it? mistake first. Is it? We can have this conversation if you tell me the exact size and shape of your genitals. I was told I had what they call a Dutchman's dick. Average length, bud can. OK, now it's getting weird. It's the first trans person to go on the island. I want to do well. I always had this sense that I was different and that I didn't belong. I've been through some really dark times in my life. That feeling of not feeling like you're good enough has really pushed me to actually to live my life to the full. I love that sense of community and belonging. I never really felt that, and I think that's a really big part of why I want to do this island experience, is that I want to feel included in something. I want to feel part of something. I want to feel accepted. I've got wet pants on. I don't know what to do. Take them off, dry your flues, and put some clean ones on. What am I going to dry my bits with? Leaf. Get someone to blow on them. <laughs> Shut up. I'm sure you'll have volunteers, babe. <laughs> don't be disgusting. I'm kind of amazed at how well it's all going. We've got food cooking on the part. We've got um, coconuts. We've got fire. We've just been sorting things out really diplomatically, like grown-ups. Like, we're doing well. We're doing good. Oh, shit. I just saw lightning on the horizon, and the horizon is turning black. The thunder. I could do with a bit of rain. Guys, so basically, the plan is, I reckon we're going to need some long poles for the roof shelter to protect us from rain coming from the sea. OK. Right, straight through, round. All right, hang on. And you're heading straight well, to where the bamboo is. Well done, everyone. We're doing really good at Cape the yard. Montana's got swimming goggles on to protect her eyelashes because she paid 60 quid for them before she come out. I've got individual eyelash extensions, so... I support They've you. got to be protected. Shit. That's a real storm. Wow, here it comes hard and cold. You're losing the fire! We're losing the fire! It's too much palm on it, which is what's meant to leave it, leave it, no, leave it now, leave it now! Right, go get me a coat. Grab the coat. Protect the fire. Paris, hand me that big one I'm in the back. Um, it's a lot happening at once, isn't it? I don't think anything can prepare you for that. Right, I need kindling as well. But the kindling's going to be wet now. Yes, it's going to be wet, but that's why it's kindling, because it dries quicker and we can use it. Right, where is it? In the fucking woods. In the woods? It's six, babe. No, not round here. Kindling, you've got to go get some. You don't have to swear at people. Some people need to switch on. Kindling is in the woods, the same place as it's been since we've been here from day one. I so let's switch on. I know this is tough, but let's switch on and get the kindling and get bits done. I'm not, I'm not doing things when you ask me like that. That's it, simple. All right, we'll work your way then, and the rest of us will get it done. This is a big, big plate of note with a side order of foot my life. With tempers on the island starting to fray, Paris calls a meeting. Guys, there's something I wanted to talk about with the group. Obviously, we haven't been sleeping, we haven't been eating, and I've just noticed that people have been getting a bit cranky, which is totally to be expected in this, in this situation. But, like, some of it has become quite rude. We're all here as equals. Nobody should be telling anybody what to do. You ask people nicely. <coughs> that was me. On that note, though, if we are all equals, then we need to start spreading the responsibility of what we're doing equally. OK, but I don't deserve to be sworn at. 
You won't deserve to be sworn at, but it was right. quite, we was all running about Just and you asked me a question. Okay, but I would never, I would, Paris, I would Paris, Paris, to... Paris, you asked where to get kindling from. It sounds pretty aggressive. It might be a little bit aggressive, but I'd be head under a fire trying to keep a fire going well, in the stall. Okay, and if we light the fire, hold on, hold on. When someone's had their head under a fire trying to blow it, come back to life, breathing in smoke for two hours, surely he's got the right to say, go and get the really? fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise for upsetting you, Ooh, all right? Sorry. And I mean that. Morning. I've provided the celebrities with some basic tools and fishing equipment, but so far they've only managed to catch one stingray and are surviving on tiny amounts of coconut and limpets. There's a risk of there being an acceleration into you know, proper fatigue and illness. Yeah. We're just all going to gradually descend in that way. Yeah. So, if we don't find food, yeah. yeah. No, at the yeah, moment, yeah, that's yeah, when at the yeah, moment yeah, we yeah. haven't got it. Is there anything I can do to help? I don't mind tending the fire, I don't mind going fishing. I just really want to try and get some food today. I'm thinking, are you all right for water filtering? I can do that, that's yeah. That's so, so important for okay. us. Let's go, boys and girls. Come on, man, let's go. I'm getting impatient here. With finding food an urgent priority, Ex-model Joe heads out with boxer Anthony in search of oysters. Joe, I've got an awfully long thing dangling between my legs. Have you? Your lucky wife. It's very nice. It's my lucky knife, my life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. There's one, looks like there's one in there. Rock oyster, knife out. Oyster juice just spurted in my eye. Yeah. I've been bukkake by an oyster. Ah. Bukkake? I never heard that word. Yeah, before. it's too, it's too, it's too naughty for you, John. It's a bad word. I should hardly think so. You've got no idea about my past life. <laughs> I'm a former model, but people might know me for having been married to one of the Rolling Stones, Ronnie Wood. Yes, I lived a rock and roll lifestyle. I used to party all the time, stay up all night. It was good fun. For me, if you can keep a young, healthy mind, then I, that's the most important thing. It's the energy that you project keeps you young. If I can survive that rock and roll madness, I must be able to survive this. We'll see. Fine, Joe. This old boy is rock solid. Oh, <sighs> my God. Here we go. Look how beautiful that looks. You can eat that. Yeah. Oh. Good. Give me some of that, girl. Jesus Christ. I don't think of you as a trans. Is that weird? It's not a trans, it's a trans person or a trans woman. Is that, is that me is calling that, you that... a black? <laughs> is that how it sounds? Back at camp, Paris has been assigned the task of filtering water, but is talking to Montana on the beach. But there is a thing in reading there that I'm... I'm not pulling my weight. They're looking down at me. It's like a little in joke. Lazy Paris. They're looking down their nose at me. I don't have an Olympic medal, but I've had to struggle with things that people in this group couldn't even begin to wrap their head around. Why am I just letting people be rude to me? Why don't I just tell them, fuck off? P, hey, you're right. I don't know. I haven't slept. My jacket smells of smoke. I woke up feeling sick. I've got heartburn. Everyone's being rude to me. No, they're not. I don't need to be spoken to like this. Derision. Yeah. I haven't fucking done anything wrong. Oh, God, no. Hi, Pete. If you need Paris, I'm going to stay on the island. What do you think? 
Uh, yeah, brilliant. Glad you like it. Have I done something? Yeah, you have actually. Oh, Let's have a little chat about oh, it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Every day I'm waking up and I'm like, oh, hi, can I go hunting? Can I do this? No, just do the what we know. You're not doing it right. Fuck you if I'm not doing it right. Do it yourself. No, 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 no. Hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know what your problem is now, and you're going to have this big show, whatever you're doing. It's okay to move to people. No. So I'm snapping at you. You've got to suck it up. I'll suck it up then, but come back and have the conversation. Don't come over here and say things and then walk off. I don't have to be with people talking to me like I'm a fucking I don't. I'm not a I don't have to have that. Oh my God. Is that bad, Grandpa? Those are literally a pair of golden gloves. Right, fat boy, go fish. Despite growing tensions in camp, finding food remains the celebrity's main priority. James and Pete head out to check the fishing nets. We've got all that pair of stuff you've got. How about you just start getting the big enough? Really? Yeah. Oh. Has Paris done anything? You don't even have a map. Nothing's getting done. Anyway, bigger fish to fly, literally. Crew's hungry and tired, there's no doubt about it. Every day we're gonna get more tired, more thirsty, and we've got more to do. So I look like a little boy. Do as well. No, you do. <laughs> I look like Gollum with a fucking wig. <laughs> I've ensured there's enough wildlife and vegetation on the island for the celebrities to survive but only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it, and kill it. Here we go. James and Pete set off into the jungle, hoping to source some much-needed calories. I've completely lost my sense of humour and sense of direction out. In terms of what I'm best known for, it was running at the Olympics and winning at the Olympics, primarily because Steve Redgrave is in my boat. I went to the South Pole, and I have rode across the Atlantic, and then with cycling in America, I got smacked by a fuel truck going 70 miles an hour. The wind of a truck hit me on the back of the head, right at the front of my brain, uh, into my skull. I was uh, put into a coma, and, and now, as a result of the accident, very bad at judging a social situation. Because of what happened, I have to be more self-aware. But then if you're hungry, dehydrated, knackered, I think that all goes out the window. With what happened, Crackers, yeah. you was in a coma for, what, three weeks? Yeah. So has it had any long-term effects on you? If, you? if you damage your frontal lobes like I did, if you're not very empathetic, you become less empathetic, more stubborn, more irritable. Epilepsy. What's the epilepsy you bought on by? Is it strobe lighting and that? Do you want to know? Yeah. Dehydration and fatigue. Oh, why have I come out of him? <laughs> I can't drag him back. Why have I come out with you? Gosh, such a dilemma. What flip-flops to wear? Hey, this is the look. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Coconuts taste like balls. Balls? It's <laughs> horrible. While the lack of food is the camp's number one concern, their water supply must still be constantly replenished and filtered. Martin, Eric and Montana are heading out to refill the jerry cans. Want some coconut, Eric? Can you hold that? Do I? Tastes like balls, you're handing it to me. <laughs> do you want it? Tastes like balls, you're handing it to me. Well, do you want it or not? Tastes like balls, you're handing it to me. I'm going to carry it here, I'm going to carry it back. You no, got no, bad no, no, no. You're I'm leading the way. Like... I've just said I'm doing it. No. Stop. Stop. I've just said I'm doing it. Eric gets right on my tits. 
I was going for water today, Eric decided to come with me and then you've got two people doing the same job. He's so stubborn. Almost a full can. Take everything. I carry one side, you carry one side? No, I'll take, I'll take it down. It's easy if you're on your own down there. We'll both carry it, it'll be no, heavy. No, I will carry it on it. Oh. Talk about it on the way back. Oh, fuck. I'm right here. Put hey. it down, I got it now. Put it down, I got it now. Eric, you okay? It's the grumpiest old man I've ever met in my life. You okay, Eric? All right, big man. I'm sure underneath it all, off the island, he's a lovely man. He's a lovely dad, you know, he's a lovely granddad. But on this island, with me, I mean, he drives me insane. <sighs> Give me a minute. I'm tired. James and Pete have now been searching for food in the jungle for over three hours. So I think we're right in the middle of the day now. It's very hot. Everything looks the fucking same. I think we could be in worlds of bother if we don't get anything from this. My legs are going. Is this yucca? I think this is yucca. There's a properly knobbly stem. Let's... Ooh, and they come up easy. That's yucca. Right. My man! Oh, you beauty, come and pop up. Calves, exactly what we need. Them. The way things have been in the camp the last few days, I think this is going to boost everyone so much and hopefully bring us all back together a little bit. What happened? What does that stem off? God, get Fuck in off. there! Did you get the yucca? Oh, Joe, you're weightless. Well Come on. Oh, Joe, you're so tired. Oh, well done. Great work, mate. Great work. Oh, my God. Thank that's you. Our, that's our bag of food. Can, you give... can we grab that jerry can just to get some water? At least you can yeah. hydrate. In the tropical heat, taking on sufficient fluids is vital. Paris is responsible for water filtering duties in camp. Is the water done? Are you kidding me? Fuck's sake. It's been draining really slowly. It's that we've, we've been topping it up as soon as it's gone down, but it's been taking a really long time to drain. Paris, in the future, if something's not working, you need to say, rather than just keep banging your head against but the I wall. Didn't realize, I didn't realise that it, how quickly it was going, meant to be going down, because I've never done it before. I would have no way of knowing that that isn't the rate at which the water goes down. And that's why you need to ask someone. Crackers has been non-stop working, and then what I didn't want to see when I come back was to see Paris lying on the beach again. My patience is wearing thin, very, 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 very thin. So I'm sure this meeting then. As the day draws to a close, James gathers a group together on the beach. The bottom line is that we are not all pulling our way. Do, do you feel, James, that everybody's doing what they can? No. No. Right. Neither okay. do I. Because I do. I, I, I point blank don't. Okay. It's, it's obvious. Not everyone is pulling their so weight. So you think people could do more, but they're choosing not to because they're lazy? Uh, not because they're choosing not to, because, for, because they don't have to, because other people are doing it. I believe everybody's probably no, got it within no, them to do no, slightly yeah. more. Everybody's got it in with them to do slightly more. I'm sorry, I'm going to put my hands up now. I think there's three or four people that if they do any more, they'll kill over. And if they're fucked, this group is going down. It won't survive without them. It's, it's, it's that simple. The, the thing is that if you're not prepared to 100%, fuck off the island. If, if one person isn't doing their best, it's going to be a shit time for all of us. Yeah. I am genuinely, 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 genuinely struggling. So I think what we should do is someone needs to take charge and just give everyone jo we jobs. We did that We've today. Done it. Filter the water, come back, it's not fucking done. So how more clear done. can we be than do that? In a survival situation, the group is only as strong as its weakest member. And that's why it's important that the islanders just stick together. The reality is, arguments are just a waste of valuable energy. 
cold in there. Oh my god! <laughs> Fucking hell, James. God's sake. Oh, no! We've had a very tough day. Oh my we? god! I don't understand what the issue is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What's wrong? I don't want to look at that. What's the matter, baby? What's oh wrong? my fucking god! Welcome to Joe's kitchen. Today we're going to be cooking limpets. <laughs> it's like Sunday brunch, this, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So what are we cooking today, then, Joe? We'll filter some water. Mm. And we'll go uh, with our knives and get limpets. Well, I'll be back in 15 minutes to see how you're getting on, Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> and after that, we'll be making roasted coconut. <laughs> <laughs> very oh, good. I do Don't like my own jokes. Keen to improve the camp's meagre diet, Joe heads for the rocks on a solo fishing expedition. I think a lot of my will to stay and, and to endure comes from being the most mature woman on the island. You can be any age and, and, and say, right, I want to do this, but am I mentally strong enough? I don't know. I don't know. It's hard, difficult. Wish me luck. I nearly lost that limpet. Fishing, fishing, I've gone fishing. Eric, why are you always bad guys in films? Bad guys get the best clothes, the best cars, the loosest women. <laughs> why is that? And we get to die, it just happens there. Bam, 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 bam. Like the Godfather. Like, uh, like James Conn and Godfather, right. It was so much fun. What the fuck? That was a sprint. Fucking hell, Joe. I thought she was dying. Oh. Oh. I think we can eat that, can we? So frustrating. My first fish I've ever line caught, and it just happened to be a puffer fish. I've just ran like Forrest Gump. Really annoying. I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> you were feeling just fine just now. We were having a really good conversation. I could feel it is good. I literally nearly collapsed earlier. Back in camp, the state of Paris's health is causing concern. You OK? It's got no energy. I can't even stand up. Oh. I think what we, uh, we have to know yeah. is that we're going to carry her. Oh, you know? We're going to carry her. I know we are, but there's... In that case, she doesn't eat as much. But we, we can't say to somebody that you can't eat as much as us, no matter if they're doing more or less. Yeah, can't I'm do that. for He's totally right. You, you right, can't do that. Yeah. You've got to ask them. We have to ask. You, you can't do that. You can't even ask, man, because it's not right. I've been thinking about why I, I seem to have so little strength. Men and women have testosterone, and women, I think, produce it in their adrenal or pituitary gland. And this gives a bit of strength. Actually, my body doesn't really produce testosterone now. I've probably got less testosterone in my body than the girls. I've been thinking, why am I so weak? Why am I so weak? And I really think it's that. Go. Not again. Wow. Oh, I can't think of anything more miserable than this. This is a disaster. 
disaster. Oh, what am I doing here? Very, very cold. I keep stuttering for some reason. Another night of intense tropical storms have battered the island. I could just literally just hear them buzzing because I actually just haven't had any sleep. Is it under my eye? No, it's just on the eyelid. It was the most miserable night of my entire life, I think. I'm wet through now. I look miserable, filthy. My hands, my hands look like they are about 200 years old. I really, really want, I don't know if I can do another night like that. It was just horrendous. So I would. She's normally got a positive little bit of energy, but absolutely falling in love with Joe. So I'm really sad to see her struggling. This is when the, the mental side of things is really going to kick in. You can't keep it clean No, there. no. No, I'm about to give it a really good tidy up. Yeah. And then you're going to stay off your feet. So frustrating. Can parents do any work? Yeah, I think so. She'd be well enough. Talia, oh, is she feeling collapsy again today? Paris, I think you've just got to decide whether you think you can do this. Last night, Paris and James clashed over Paris's perceived lack of effort in camp. Are you all right for a quick chat? This morning, she is attempting to clear the air. I'm not lazy. I'm really, really, really struggling. I don't know, it's frustrating, and I can see it's frustrating. You're an Olympian. I just don't have your strength. Talk is cheap. We've got 21 days left, right? People just want the next 21 days to go as easy as possible for them. There are things that I could do to improve. You know, I'm not the best version of myself now, or even when we're at home, you know, I'm always trying to perfect who I am as a person and be a better version of myself every day. P people don't want to hear that. Getting angry at me. I'm not angry. Okay, I'm, be well, I'm being dead straight. I'm being dead straight. You no, angry. you'd know if I was angry. You... There's obviously some resentment. Uh, you want uh, yeah, there is resentment, but you want anger. I'll show you anger. That is not anger. Okay. Well, I mean, even that's pretty that, aggressive. Okay, that's aggressive, but it's not anger. I promise to contribute more to this group, but can you please promise to just contribute a bit more empathy? I will be better able to contribute if you can just... Just please... contribute. You're not better able. Just do it. Stop fucking talking. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Talking does fuck all. Do it. When you're struggling in a survival situation, it's so easy just to get stuck in this rut. Paris has just got to get out of that comfort zone and get herself out of this downward spiral, or her time on the island is going to be limited. <laughs> Following their latest confrontation, James calls a group together to discuss how to deal with Paris. We need to say something. Look, where is she? <laughs> She's sunbathing. I genuinely, you know, come from here that there's no resentment to how she's been in the first week. She hasn't been that well. But if she, she has to now, when she is well, not sunbathe. You know, it's, it's, she can change our opinions, but she has to do it to change it. Otherwise, it's going to end up being a horrible situation for her to be in and for everyone else. I, 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 can I guarantee not losing it with her? No. And I don't want to. Do what? I'll go and have a chat about her now, whilst it's fresh. And I'll just be very honest with her. Right. Where is she? Where are we, ladies? Room for Litland? Me, Joe, Sally, we've all had this like, little chat just now in the camp. And oh, so everybody feels like this now. Everyone feels like, everyone feels a bit frustrated. There's going to be some serious friction in the group if you stay and don't do more. You can be an asset here, but only if you want to be the asset. 
And it's got to be all day, every day. It can't be in fit and spurts, because we don't do things in fit and spurts. We do things all the time. Oh, come here, come here, don't cry. Come oh, on. Pete. Come on, don't cry. Do you think I want to be in this oh, no, position? You don't want to be. Come no, here. my love. Come here. Don't get upset. I yeah. feel so humiliated. Clearly, it's not working for me, is it? I'm just fucking people off. These people are superhumans. I, I just don't know how they're doing it. I literally don't know how they're doing it. I need to do stuff. Do you know what? I'm just going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to give it 100%. This is ridiculous. It's about survival stuff, not people bickering with each other. To escape the escalating tension, Joe leaves camp to provide the group with a much needed meal. I don't like to get involved in the politics. But I think I know what starving is. It's your whole body is weak. It's exhausting to walk down the beach. It's exhausting to walk up the beach. Please wish you were yucca. No, you're not yucca either. Jesus bloody Christ! Oh, come on. I haven't got the energy. I haven't got the energy. I'm feeling my age. What's that on that tree over there? Oh, look at that. What's that? What are those things? Oh, my God. I swear this is papaya. I just have to check to see if this papaya, please, please. Oh, it is. <laughs> Welcome to papaya. <laughs> oh, my God. You might love me after have you got coconuts? Have you got yucca? So what have you got other than a banging body for 62 year old? Oh, <laughs> I do have. Oh my god. Oh. Papaya! Papaya! Oh my god! Amazing Joe. Oh my god. This woman is my saviour. Her energy is just. It's just a bollocks. Well oh. I can't think of anything I'd rather have. says age has got anything to do with it. It hasn't. And I hope my kids will look at me and think, if my mother can do a month on an island and survive, age will not stop them from doing anything. That's what I hope. That's why I didn't leave. Never give up. After a night's rest, Paris has arranged to lead a trek into the jungle with Anthony and Montana. I've seen physically we can have been ill some days, but today I want to do something. Good luck to free you then. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Three, two, one. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Is that a gang? See you guys. See you Wish us luck. Good luck, people. We're going to nail it. We believe. We still believe. We still believe. We still believe. We still believe. Come on. Yeah? Before we set off. Are your legs hurting? Are my legs hurting? Yeah. No. What? No, not yet. Right, OK. Are yeah. your legs hurting? Not really. Why? These legs are hurting already. Can't turn back now. I'm going to look so fucking stupid if I go back now. Walked, like, literally a minute. There's no point if your legs are hurting now. I didn't want to say it because it's humiliating, but it's actually... I feel like I'm at the end of the track now. I was so stoked to go and do this. It's actually scary how quickly you turn weak. All right, you good luck. I'm sorry. 
It's, just, it's so frustrating. I know, let's crack on, come on. Let's go. We've got a long day ahead of ourselves. Oh, God. They'll be so humiliated. Change of plan. My legs are hurting. I didn't want to do it, but I thought this, it's better to do it now than in two hours' time, innit? That is the bravest call. That's the bravest call. I feel quite stupid, but... No, it's not. It's, I tell you, stupid would have been getting halfway there and not coming back with it. And you're, it's, it's, it's a hard call to make, but it's absolutely the right one. You had the balls to go and you had the balls to turn around. I think, Joe, it's probably time to go. Having decided to lead a foraging expedition into the jungle, Paris has returned to camp after just five minutes. Oh. I woke up this morning absolutely 100% determined to go out and get food for this group today. The last thing that I wanted to do was turn around and say, I can't do it. I came here to learn things about myself and what, I, what I've learned has surprised me, it's humbled me. To be honest, we, we can't go on like this. Sad, but I don't think this is the right environment for Paris. Bravo to zero. This is zero receiving, over. After nine days on the island, Paris makes a call to my safety team. I have pushed myself as far as I can go. I'm so sorry, it's not the outcome I wanted at all, but I think I need to leave the island. Please get me out of here as soon as you can. <laughs> Guys, I'm really sad to leave you, but I just feel it's what I've got to do. I'm not just doing it for me, I'm doing it for the good of the group, because I don't want to drain you and drag you down, because you're all troopers. Don't plug my face. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you. You're brilliant. Bye, Oh, my God. <laughs> cry. Oh, One more. Hi. Come on. Okay, thank you. Bye, guys. Love you. Sorry. There goes the drama. Right decision to go. It doesn't make it any easier to watch someone disappear in the boat. And I stood there thinking, how big of a part did I play in that? I came here not to press my opinions or be overbearing the way I think things should have been done. We only get one experience here, and if I made her experience worse, then I'm truly sorry. Lost two this week, then. Well, me, I've not got any girls left. Pete's looking like a girl. Oh, fuck off, <laughs> you dickhead. Paris has gone and she was the focus of attention before. So what happens now? Does the attention go on to somebody else or do we all work as a team? Only time will tell. It's going to rain tonight. I should get a rain stick. A rain stick? Years ago, when we were on tour, Keith always had his stick with him, his rain stick. And, and what did he If do? it was going to rain before a gig, he used to go out and he used to go... <laughs> and sometimes it wouldn't rain. It's raining, 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 raining. We're being abused by nature. She will uh, make us pay. Despite the bad weather, Pete and James swim out to check the nets. Fuck. Oh, Nothing. Ah, 
We're back empty-handed, I'm afraid. Oh, no! We love you anyway. People are starting to get really down in terms of energy and then enthusiasm. Combination of rain, dehydration and lack of food meant that there's not many winds coming and that's going to lead to more people leaving. What do you call hey, celebrities going on a desert island for a month? What? Fucking stupid. The celebrities have now eaten barely anything in five days. Pete and James head out once more to check the failing nets. Oh, please be fish, please. Well, the net looks good anyway. Let's hope there's something in it. Come on, edible food, show your face. Hey, hang on. What you got? I don't know, I can't see it yet. <laughs> come here, come here. Thanks. Come here. It's on right at the bottom there. Yeah, I hear that. Let's do that. Go on there. Right the end of my thing, you should. Yeah, we've got fish. Oh, you fucking beauty. It's a beauty. This is a beauty. <laughs> What did you find? Anthony. Come here. One, two, three. Wow. Four. <laughs> Holy moly. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Must be one, fifteen, sixteen. That's huge. Twenty, twenty-one. That is fantastic. Well, well done, guys. Done. I cannot sell you how fucking happy that makes me. It is a real triumph for us as a team. Over 20 fish in the nets. I can't believe that we've been this successful. It's a great feeling. A massive win for getting food for the camp. We're kicking on, one foot in front of the other. We can get through this. Next time on the island. I didn't start up for this. I'm really worried about Eric's eye. Left untreated, it can cause the loss of sight. Come in, mate. Oh my god, we couldn't be more lost if we tried. I feel physically weak and I feel really mentally weak. <laughs> Eric! Bloody hell! Some sort of animal behind us. First century, there's no escaping the cult of celebrity. This old woman in Sainsbury's turned around and said, I knew it was you, I recognised your breathing. Idolised by adoring fans. There's nothing more fun than being famous. Celebs enjoy living in the lap of luxury. I feel like my eyelashes are coming off. Oh, no, they're not. I want to find out what happens when they're stripped of the trappings of fame. I've always got a fresh mani-pedi. People might think, oh, she doesn't want to get her hands dirty, but I will. And left to fend for themselves. Is this a good idea? I don't know if I want to do this, you know. <laughs> for the next four weeks, I'm abandoning ten celebrities. 8,000 miles from home on a remote Pacific island. With just the clothes on their back. I mean, you don't know you've lived until you've shit in the sea and then that swim away from it. And a few basic tools. Anthony! Come on! I'm going for the big stuff. I'm going for crocodiles. They'll only eat what they can catch and kill. Why is this happening when we're top left? I think I'm going to die on this island. <laughs> Quick! She's trapped! Use <laughs> your knife! Pitted against the forces of nature. It's a knife injury. It looks like it's his entire finger. 
as tropical storm season rages around them. Montana's got swimming goggles to protect her eyelashes. They've got to be protected. Going great. Oh, wow. Gnarly, dude. Welcome to the fire. <laughs> Is that a rubber Johnny? <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting away. We're dead and this is a dream. Stop talking. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. Push to the limits of human endurance. <laughs> it feels like <laughs> Do you think I want to be in this position? Who will have the grit and determination to survive? Ow! to move. This whole beach is going to disappear. Ten days ago, I marooned ten celebrities. Great clearing right here, guys. On the remote Pacific island. We're losing the fire. We're losing the fire. Extreme tropical weather and arguments in camp. Someone needs to give everyone jobs. We did that today. Fill to the water. Come back. It's not done. Don't come over here and say things and then we'll cough. I don't have to have that. Have already forced two of the celebrities to quit. Please, can you come and get me now? I need to leave the island. Come on, edible food, show your face. Desperate for food, the islanders have so far only managed to catch a stingray <laughs> and a single haul of fish. And the group haven't eaten a proper meal for two days. Oh, my stomach hurts. Since arriving on the island, the celebrities have been surviving on less than 200 calories a day. Got no energy. The only thing we've got is water, with no calories in, and coconut. Everyone is slowing down. We are slowing down rapidly. And we need some, some energy. Look at this. Skinny as anything. Yep. Wow. I know. It's not ideal. It's very, very, very tough, and it's tough to kind of carry on doing things when you've got a belly full of nothing. I'm done a shit in probably a week and a half, so that's promising. But yeah, positivity, that is key. Good morning, my beautiful people. I'm best known for my appearance on Love Island. Oh, my well. God, absolutely unreal. And now I've transformed into a social media influencer. People are interested in what I wear, what makeup I use, what skincare I use. Someone even messaged me once, like, do you drink whole, semi-skimmed or no-fat milk? I'm going on the island because I feel like it's a test for myself where, you know, I'm not treated like a princess all the time. And I'm going to nail it, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to last the four weeks, whether you like it or not. I'm going to try and cheer everyone up. I need to give everyone hugs so that everyone's happy. Oh, I like this today, Mum. Yeah, I have made me happier. See? Uh. <laughs> a lot of good survival isn't rocket science. Whatever the world and the situation is throwing at you, respond with positivity and it does make a difference. I'm starving. I'm really I'm hungry. so hungry. Let's have a morning meeting. Come on, let's go. Since their arrival, the group has made no attempt to hunt any animals on the island. I guess the one discussion we haven't had, you know, there's been no mention of going out hunting. What do people have a reservation about eating or a reservation about killing or being a part of killing? I would not want to kill an iguana. OK, so let's just do a show of hands. Who's against killing an iguana? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah. I probably have a little leg. Cayman? Don't want How about pig? I only eat a halal diet anyway. Pig, definitely no, no. I won't do snake. I think if someone gave me a piece of snake, or if I saw a snake, I wouldn't have a problem with killing that. I'm not sure of why that is. I'm pescatarian back home, and that will stay the same here. I don't want any part of killing anything else. But I think it's irrelevant now, because we might not catch any fish, and we might come across a caiman. Are we saying that we're just not going to kill it and just have a, have a couple of limpets? I, 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 would, I would kill it. I, I would, would kill the caiman. I'd be starving. I would rather just drink water and lose every part of body weight that I've got than, than kill something. So and I, I wouldn't. Then I can survive on water. 
I've had coconuts and a couple of limpets for dinner every single evening, like, I'm fucking starving and I'm wasting away by the second. I didn't enjoy that conversation. And I just think you, you, you can get by without taking the life of a pig or a caiman or an iguana or whatever is here. If we could survive the whole time without killing an animal and just living off fish, I would be more than happy to do that. But the point is, we're not catching enough fish. We're all fucking starving. It's at the point now where I actually feel sick with the coconut. It's making my stomach turn. I feel sick of the smell of it, the sight of it. Desperately want some carbohydrates in my body. With the meat eaters and pescatarians at loggerheads, Anthony decides to lead a hunting expedition for yucca instead. Me and Mon just sing songs on our hunts together. Isn't that cute? You guys fancy it? No. Rather than trek around the lagoon through thick mangroves, the hunting party take advantage of low tide and walk across instead. What time does the tide go back out? We've got to get in and out in about three to four hours. I'm just going to poke my nose around the corner. While Salia looks for an opening in the mangroves, Anthony and Eric wait on the shore. I reckon we should really find our way inland. So next in we find, should we take it and have an explore? Or should I talk to myself? I'm asking you a question, Eric. Uh, uh, Eric? Uh, We're on a yucca hunt. Haven't eaten a carb in about two weeks. One team member's fast asleep pushing out Zed's like nobody's business. So everyone's buggered off somewhere. Uh, uh, They're frustrated. And the tide is coming in. Uh, oh no, the tide came in on me. I was sound asleep and then here comes the water. Eric Roberts. Being a celebrity is the greatest thing in the world because everywhere I go, somebody tells me, how much they appreciate me. <laughs> they think I'm a movie star, so I have to give them the movie star. So hot. I live a charmed life. I am you treated like a very well taken care of show dog. That's Hollywood, baby. They say go, and I go, and I show myself and do my thing, say my lines, and then go sit down and wait. Got it? Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah. Cool, dude. My skill sets are nothing that applies to this adventure. Hmm. That being said, I will try to be an asset, not a pain in the ass. What do you reckon? Why? It's the same. Quite high, very dense. Can't get in. The path ahead is blocked, so the hunting party has no choice but to turn back. What a hunting team. I'd just like cheese toasty and a two else I'd like something to suck. No stupid jokes. I know what you're like. Like, pear drop. You are one cheap day to <laughs> Back in camp, there's only one topic of conversation. A vegetable dressed with naan bread. Oh. Why is it we always have to talk about food? Or a Krispy Kreme donut. With any luck, they'll have a bag full of yucca. I don't understand what's happening. We're looking for yucca. No, I understand that. We're just looking for yucca, mate. Three hours into their trek, the hunting party has finally found a way into the jungle, but have yet to find any yucca. What's happening is you're walking in a Z. You're going this way, then this way, and then this way. Do you want to walk straight through then, do you? You need to walk in a straight line. So that way could it work? That's not a straight line at all. No, yeah, but we're but finding... Who said, who said hunting for yucca had to be in a straight line? Oh, why are you so short with me, Anthony? But it's just like... It's just no. frustrating, Eric. Mangrove is on our right, so I've just turned right. Why are we following her? It's like she's drunk. <laughs> I'm dog-tired. This entire time, I'm carrying a 30-kilogram bag on my shoulders, and he's whinging. But why are you going this way? This isn't the way. Are you taking the flipping piss? Crack on. Now you lead the way. I'll follow in your trail. Any joy? Nah. 
Let's get back in around before we get washed away by the tide. Oh, bollocks. Tide has come in. Is that the bog? Yeah. You're kidding. Having lost track of time... We can't get around there. Wow, we fucked up. The hunting party's route back to camp is now cut off by the rising tide. Just a disaster. Didn't get any yucca. I've come back, the tide's really high. That's home, right? Yeah. So if I swam straight across, I'd be home, right? Yeah. OK, that's what I'm doing. You swim across? Yeah. Why, why did you not come like the rest of us? Because I can't walk around in here. I have to go through it with the caiman. Bloody hell! Rather than walk around the edge of the lagoon, Eric has decided on a shortcut. That is a long way. I can make it, Eric just took upon himself, he said, I'm swimming across. Didn't even ask, just went. We could have all walked around, but we can't now, so we're all going to have to swim. Powerful tidal currents make crossing the Cayman-infested lagoon difficult, even for the stronger swimmers. <sighs> Some sort of animal behind us in the water. Shit. Fuck this. Bad idea. Eric! 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 He's a stubborn old man. I can't tell him. Cut off from the camp by the rising tide, Eric has decided to swim across the lagoon forcing Anthony and Salia to follow. Swim was long. So I there and there's one went half in the water and they were on three feet long. Eric, I'm knackered. I swam across the river because you decided to swim. Now can we all do a favour between now and we get back? Can we stay together? Fucking tired. Hiya! We're back. Woo! Was that a good trip? No, not really. No yucca. Oh, you're kidding. Eric really tested my patience. I come on the island to, to be part of a team. We weren't all pulling in the same direction today. It was like being a parent and going out of a three-year-old. Anthony may be a great boxer, not a good leader in the jungle. The doc may be a good doctor. She's not a good leader in the jungle. It was exhausting. I'm so upset about the yucca. I need a knife to, so I can do coconut. Without the vital carbohydrate that yucca could provide, the islanders are forced to have coconut for dinner once again. I need Eric's knife. What's she saying? Can I get you a knife? Cheers, man. No, you know what? Yeah. You know what? What? Last time I got away, didn't come back. How is that his knife? It's all of our knives. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not his knife. I don't understand why he thinks it is. And he's got a knife? Yeah, but I need to keep it. All of our knives, don't forget. It belongs to all of us. No, oh, no okay. one person. I know that, but to... I was going to use it, though. That's what I mean. Now bring it right back to you. Put it back in my hand. I don't think Eric realises how much he winds everybody up. He has a knife. He won't give it up. It's weird. This is all of our experiences. And the experiences for us, not just for him. Can I count on you on putting the knife back in my hand? Right, well, why yeah, don't you get another knife, knife then? Water. No, no, I just mean at the end of the day. Yeah. Thank you, brother. God, I would hate to be married to him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a difficult man to cope with, and I haven't come across somebody like that before, uh, and I'm struggling with him, to be honest. Everything is about him, and it can't be on this island. If negative situations are allowed to fester in a group, 
it's inevitably going to push people to breaking point. Their rifts emerging now, what hunger will do, it will act like a crowbar, forcing those rifts further apart. You didn't even wash my knife, Joe. How gross. Well, wish us luck. I wish you absolutely zero luck, and I hope you just scare everything away. With no fish or yucca, Montana has decided that the camp's food situation is now critical. Go on, fuck off. Yeah. Honestly. She and Anthony are going out hunting in search of meat. Bad luck, that's all I'm giving you. I've probably pissed people off, but I have to state how I feel about you. I know some people are happy to, to, to kill the animals, but it's just not something that I can be a part of. Obviously, Pete doesn't agree with killing animals whilst we're here. I understand his point of view, but at the same time, I am starving. And if I want to do something, I'm going to go do it. Montana now is constantly moaning about hunger. Constantly. But what you have to understand when you're in a group like this is that everybody's hungry. The minute you say the words, I'm hungry, every, it brings everybody down a notch. And you have to be really careful. You lead the way, Joe. I'm fascinated by these rocks. So the aliens must have transported these here. While Montana and Anthony hunt for meat, Joe and Martin are attempting to catch fish. I saw a great UFO in Brazil. Ronnie was outside, it was like midnight, something like that. And he suddenly goes, Joe, get out here now! Get out here now! There's something mad in the sky! There's something mad in the sky! I ran out, and out there was, like, these lights going into the water. And then it was gone. And I went, Jesus Christ, I've just seen a UFO. What do you think about alien abduction now? I'd love to be abducted. I'd like to think, when I die, I go back to the mother planet. Right. I don't believe in evolution. You don't? No. If we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Hey, I got a bite! I got a fish! Oh, my God! Oh, my... Oh, fuck! That was a big one as well. It's taken my hook. What do you reckon, Martin? Should we call it a day? Yeah. Damn it! Let's hope the others have caught a chicken or something. Yeah, snaky, 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 snaky. Masters of disguise, hey? Montana and Anthony have been hunting for snakes for the past two hours. Anything? No. Oh, my God. Yeah. I can't go on for another couple of weeks not eating. I felt like um, Pete was being a bit grumbly because we've decided to come and do this. We've gone rogue. Just because he doesn't agree with it. Doesn't so, mean we can't do it. Yeah. Right, let's pack up our shit. Go. It's, oh, it's crazy. A bunch of pescatarians that don't want to hunt caimans and snakes. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> They're coming back. If they come back to sink now, I'll be raging. You know what I mean? They will Hi, guys. No you didn't joy. catch nothing? Yeah! It obviously wasn't meant to be. Oh, what a shame. Oh, that's nice. That was bullshit. There's only one word for it. it was bullshit. He was overjoyed that we didn't catch any snakes. Um, it's a bit upsetting, to be honest, and I think it's kind of lowered the tone. Help with the water! I need two hands! I need two hands! Anthony! Hand me a stick, hand me one of those, one of those poker sticks right there on your left. Put that end on that beam, you know what I mean? You need the sock. Where's the sock? Toss me that top. Toss me that top. There we go. 
Woo, mama. Thank you, Anthony. I'm gonna keep this fire going. Uh, bring, uh, bring me another thingy, Anthony. Eric, oh, it's just hard work. Really, really hard work. Anthony, Anthony, get this. Anthony, Anthony, get that. Anthony, lift the water. Anthony, put the water down. He has his two or three naps a day for two, three hours a pop. I feel like I'm his carer sometimes. Hey, Shalia. Shalia. That was a coconut that I opened right up there and I took it down to the, and I put it in the pan on the fire. It's now been three days since a group last ate a proper meal and Eric is continuing to create tension in camp. I know it's my fault, sorry. I dropped it. A coconut he left roasting on the fire has fallen in the sand. Pick it up and wash it. I can't because I'd be it's glad dirt. to bring it to you to wash it. No, it's dirty and I don't want you to get sick. So I've got to be careful. It's not about being careful, it's about being lazy. I'm not, Eric, I'm not being lazy. Don't yell at I'm me, baby. At I'm not yelling at you, don't yell no, at me. We're not going to eat don't, that. Don't yell we at me. We can't eat that. You'll get sick. You will get sick. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make sure that you don't get sick. Eric comes from a world that is so far removed from one that I know. I'm an NHS doctor, and his sister is Julia Roberts. Whatever your background or baggage is, doesn't really exist here. Um, we've just got to get on and make this work as a team. I've bit my lip so often with that man. What gives him the right to make absolutely every single person in the camp upset or angry? God, I had no idea how hard this is going to be. In our tired, abused, hungry state, the smallest things, they become an issue. I just want to get some food for everyone. I think that would really boost everyone's energy levels. I wish I was wearing less clothes, because I'm really hot. What, like a pair of Lycra shorts? Yeah. They're a good look. I'm, I'm actually gagging for my denim shorts right now. The whole camp's gagging for your denim shorts right I now. I know. <laughs> Undeterred by their failed snake hunt, Montana and Anthony head out with James in search of oysters. Oh, look at that. Look, look at that black horizon. Wow. Woo, mama. Oh, why didn't I put a top on? Oh, well, this is fantastic. Fucking great. Oh, my God, I'm actually freezing. With lightning striking close by, the group turned back to camp. Come on. Yeah? It's slippy here. Be careful. Yeah, it's really, it's really slippy. Oh! God. It's going to be a hard day. Ugh. It's a mental battle, I think, trying to stay here. I'm taking each day as it comes because I'm finding it really hard. Um, but I'm trying to stay positive, but it's just, it's really tough. We lose the fire, we're fucked. You are not going out on me, fucker. Back at camp, the heavy rain is testing morale. We're all going to be crammed under there for, I would say, 12 hours. Wet and cold, hungry and thirsty. What the hell am I doing here? I just can't really feel any part of my body anymore. Yeah, me too. What the fuck are we going to do? I'm frozen. Oh, my God. By nightfall, the islanders are feeling the full force of a tropical storm. Whoa! Oh my God! Come on! Oh, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. I'm. By morning, the camp and spirits have been considerably dampened. This has been by far the worst night in this gaff since we got here. By far the worst. 
It was the most draining experience I've ever had in my life. It was like a living nightmare, to be honest with you. It was shite. God, my hand is actually lumpy. Can you see that? It's disgusting. I look like Mr. Blobby. Look at my fucking face. I've been bitten to death by God knows what. Your face doesn't look great. Your face Wait. doesn't look great. Is that in any way <laughs> helpful? <laughs> There's like 10 of us in the shelter and I'm the only one to be bitten. I counted 26 bites on my face alone, all from last night. What the fuck? I want to stick this out, I need to do this. I can do it, I just need to dig deep. I've never dug so deep in my fucking life. I spooned with Joe the other day. It was a nice spoon, wasn't it, Joe? Yes, it was. Imagine how proud your wife would be you of you, Anthony. I think hopefully she'll allow it. Yeah, she'll, she'll allow I'm sure it. she'll allow it. She'll think, she'll think a bit more like a stepmother. <laughs> yeah, because it's quite normal to spoon your stepmother, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Eric Robertson, swim break. I'll be back in two days. <laughs> As the group recover from last night's storm, Eric heads into the sea for his daily swim. Oh, oh no! Hey, please, please! I lost my wedding band. It's going to scandal. Oh shit! What is that? He's lost his wedding ring. Wedding ring in the sea. Oh my god! What colour was it? Silver coloured. I'll go. Hey, I'm there. I've got it. I've got it. There we go. Uh, no. Oh man. Sorry. It's just, it's like it's like it's like a bad movie. I dove and dove and dove and dove. Couldn't find it. It's gone. I'm so depressed because that's my wife away from home. It's just unbelievable. It'll devastate her. Ah. Man, I'm so disappointed. No, it's really demoralizing, isn't it? I know how much it hurts when you lose something as precious as that. But I've lost three of them, I don't know if I'm losing them. This sucks. How long have you been married? Uh, 25 years, last August. What's she like? Tell me about her. My wife is my hero. She's all the things I want to be when I grow up. Yeah. I love hearing that. My wife's the same to me. It would be nice. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Do I miss my wife? Even though he has his bizarre ways. Underneath it all, he's a lovely man. I'm going to go and look for his wedding now. I know he won't ever find it. It's kind of a waste of time and energy. Oh, fuck off. Where'd you get that? No way. Where'd you get that? Oh, my God. You're such good wishes. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. This means so much to me. Thank you so much, man. God, dog. Wow. I was so heartbroken. I'm so happy. Oh, I love you so much. I will never take stuff for granted again. I will appreciate my wife like never before. My wife's going to gonna have a lot of reliefs when I get home. <laughs> you guys, can I say something? Reunited with his wedding ring, Eric gathers the rest of the group to make an announcement. This whole trip has been very exposing of me to myself. I apologize to anybody that I'm 
abrasive to or demanding of or inconsiderate to. Because uh, I, think, I think I'm perfect, <laughs> but obviously I'm wrong. So I apologize to everybody here, because if I've done it to one of you, I've done it to probably most of you. So all you guys are as miserable as I am, and yet you're all pretty cool about it. Not Thank you very much. Thanks, mate. Trying to, uh, trying to act like I'm in control of my situation, which I'm not, not at all. Not even a little bit. Are you shit yet? Yeah. It wasn't a nice experience because I was swimming away from it and felt like it was chasing me. <laughs> I mean, you don't know you've lived until you've shit in the sea and then swim away from it. <laughs> Uh, and when you get tired, the fucking suddenly the, the, the shit swims faster. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this then. Having put their differences with Eric aside, the mood in camp has improved. But finding food remains a priority. Can you see any fish? Each day at low tide, Pete and James swim out to check the net for fish. But for the past four days, it's been empty. We're not going to eat tonight. What the fuck? It's annoying because I don't want to be negative and I don't want to put a down on everyone's day. But the point is, we are stranded with no food. And to be honest, I don't fancy having thin pits and coconuts for the rest of my time here. When Mother Nature shuts that larder door, you simply got to look elsewhere. Got to get on with a sometimes gruesome, unpleasant business of killing for survival for food. I want to find a caiman and I'm going to stab it in the neck. That is a terrible, terrible. We are literally in a survival situation where we have fuck all. Are you telling me you wouldn't eat it? No, I wouldn't. If I can kill a caiman, I think a lot of people would probably eat it, whether they like it or not, because we're in that situation where none of us have any energy. We all feel like shit, and we're all wasting away. We're starving here, so we don't really have a choice. We need to find some food today, we really do. Despite Pete's objections, Montana and Anthony are trekking into the island's interior in search of bigger prey. Well, when we find that water source, we have to just look in there. And I bet you any money there'll be a caiman on there. There's definitely animals around here. Something moving in the leaves. Can you hear it? Yeah. Oh, that's the little, the little sea ham, ham the crab thing. Oh. Thought it was a snake. In fact, it looks quite trodden down here. We may, did we come this way? I can't tell. It all looks the same. It's just easier if we follow the tracks that we made, isn't it? I know, but we couldn't find the tracks. This does not look familiar at all. And like, what that's do you want to all... do? I keep asking you. What do you want to do? I think we should go back. Inadvertently, Montana and Anthony have now been walking in a circle in the densest part of the jungle for the past two hours. Where are we going? It's actually quite scary, isn't it? Oh, my God. Fuck. They've been out a long time now, which is a bit worrying. At what point do we all start to think, shit, something's wrong? Well, uh, there's nothing we can do unless we traipse off into the jungle trying to find no. them, but that's an absolutely pointless exercise. We're not doing that. We start finding a needle in a haystack. I just hope they don't feel under pressure to come back with stuff. Hopefully, Anthony Rose is more important to come back. It's fucking horrendous. Oi, oi! Oi, oi, seven, oi! Okay. No, I can't do this anymore. I 
Oh, don't tell me I fucking lost. Montana and Anthony have now been in the jungle for nearly seven hours. I feel like we've walked up, like, the whole island today. I think we have. Worried about his missing campmates, James is out searching for them. Oi, oi! Who's that? Here we are, James! James! Oh, James, help us, fuck's sake! Where are you, mate? You're not far, you're not far. Head towards my voice, I won't move. Oh, my God. Have you got anything? No. We couldn't be more lost if we fucking tried. Are you OK? Is she OK? No, I don't think so. We've just come back from the most mammoth trek. We've been out for about eight and a half hours. I think this is the lowest that I've felt since we've been here by far. I just miss home. I really do. I'm finding it really tough. But you'd be so proud of yourself if you did it. I'm just, I'm really unhappy because I want to go home. This island is not a place for the faint-hearted, and so many never manage to hold on to the end. But those who thrive are the ones with the great mental strength. And once someone loses that psychological edge, it can be really hard to claw your way back. As you well know, I'm used to being quite a positive person. I'm not that happy being here anymore. Being on this island is so much harder than I thought it was going to be. Makes me want to cry. And I wouldn't want to kind of spread negativity around the camp. So I, I am leaving today. For a small person, it's actually getting a lot smaller. You're going to leave a massive hole in the camp. So I'm really disappointed. I really wanted to do this. Island life has finally proved too much for Montana, and she radios my safety team. I feel really physically weak, and I feel really mentally weak, and all I want to do is leave, and that's my final decision. <laughs> Bye. Right, she's leaving. This is shit. So Montana's left, and I can't help but feel a bit gutted about it. She went around and she made people feel better about themselves, and it's such a massive shame. <sighs> Boat ride to freedom. Two weeks we'll be on that boat. Two weeks, same as what we've just done. Two weeks is a long time. I wonder what's going to happen between now and then. Hey, Doc. Montana's departure isn't the only thing to disturb the equilibrium in camp. Now Eric has a problem too. I've been having this thing in my eyes where I have this spot in the middle that's like blurry. It's like about a third of my vision. Does it actually hurt your eyes? It's like, it's like a V. It hurts both eyes into some, some like point in the middle of my head. You know oh, okay. Know. So, okay, so it's causing you pain there. Okay, all right. Eric's blind spot and the pain that he's getting uh, from light is really, really worrying. It is something to take very, very, very seriously because potentially he could lose his sight in both eyes. Hello, Sierra, this is Bravo, over. Sierra, go ahead, over. 
Salia has no other option but to call my safety team so they can assess whether or not Eric can remain on the island. I'm not leaving because I can't leave. If they are left untreated, it can potentially cause the loss of sight. You need to see a specialist. When are we doing this? Today. Oh, now? Right now, yeah. yeah. I don't think they're letting back. No. Not something uh, as serious as that. He's a funny old guy, but I've really grown to like him now. And I think what I really want to see is that we all get through this together. I don't want to see anybody leave. I'm worried about him. Guys, we need uh, all hands on deck to put the net out. Having failed to catch any fish all week, the group decide to work together to move the net further out to sea. We need to keep the, the net as, as much from snagging as possible as we go in, yeah? All right, let's go, eh? It's a bit like Baywatch. Keep it taut as long as possible. Right, that's it. Let go there. I don't think pick up tonight. Because the tide's going to be higher, so we're going to have to wait for more. Right, well, just got to go under and check that weight at the bottom, right? If this works, fish feast tonight. We've already caught a fish. No way. We've got about six, seven fish. Hello, well mate. We are going to eat tonight. Almost a fish each. No way! Woo! A fish each. Good result. Get the fish back in, back eating. It's a good start after a rough couple of days. Over the moon. Great stuff. Wow. wow. You've caught 12 fish with the net being out for, what, 25 minutes? In this environment, that's a massive win. It was a good bit of teamwork there, getting that out. It was a real result to put all that hard work in and come back and have something to eat from it. Instant gratification. Instant, yeah. Guys, there's a boat coming in. I think this yeah. could be Eric. I'd be really surprised if that's him coming back. I think Eric's on board. Yeah, he's Yeah, there. I see him. Yeah, we! Amazing. Woo! Great. The big E is back. Oh, you're cool. Keep away. Couldn't keep away. Right, yeah. Gotta tell you guys, we have something that nobody will ever have but us. And it's really important to feel that. We have become a proper family since we've since we've started this journey together. Come in, man. Come in, mate. I'm so glad I'm bad. Oh, my eyes are okay, by the way. Oh, okay. oh yeah. <laughs> Imagine going off the island and still having such a passion and desire to come back here and, and do this. And, like, it gave the group a massive lift. That was a little boost that we needed today. A little kick up the backside. Fucking get in there, team. Let's hands in, everyone. Good this stuff. is it. We're going to be seven of us. To the end now. The Magnificent the end. Seven, yeah? yeah? 11 days, boys and girls. Come Let's on. do this! Yeah! Come on! Oh my god, guys! There's a pig! Oh. Right down the end. Next time on the island. Who is prepared to slit the pig's throat? That's one. I fucked off because I don't think it needs to be eaten. You are daddy's little piggy. Since I got here, I've lost two stone. Boy, do I want the box lessons right now. Pete is heartbroken, just heartbroken, and wants to go.
21st century, there's no escaping the cult of celebrity. This old woman in Sainsbury's turned around and said, I knew it was you. I recognised your breathing. Idolised by adoring fans. There's nothing more fun than being famous. Celebs enjoy living in the lap of luxury. I feel like my eyelashes are coming off. Oh, no, they're not. I want to find out what happens when they're stripped of the trappings of fame. I've always got a fresh mani-pedi. People might think, oh, she doesn't want to get her hands dirty, but I will. And left to fend for themselves. Is this a good idea? I don't know if I want to do this, you know. <laughs> for the next four weeks, I'm abandoning ten celebrities. 8,000 miles from home on a remote Pacific island. With just the clothes on their back. I mean, you don't know you've lived until you've shit in the sea and then swim away from here. And a few basic tools. Anthony, come on! I'm going for the big stuff. I'm going for crocodiles. They'll only eat what they can catch and kill. How is this happening when we're top left? I think I'm going to die on this island. Ah! <laughs> Quick, she's trapped. Ah! Use your knife. Pitted against the forces of nature. It's a knife injury. It looks like this is in my finger. As tropical storm season rages around them... Montana's got swimming goggles to protect her eyelashes. They've got to be protected. Going great. Oh, wow. Gnarly, dude. Welcome to the fire. <laughs> Yay! Tastes like a rubber johnny. <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting away. We're dead and this is a dream. Stop talking. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. Pushed to the limits of human endurance. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I want to be in this position? <sighs> Who will have the grit and determination to survive? Sixteen days ago, I marooned ten celebrities on a remote island in the Pacific. The extreme environment has pushed the camp to breaking point. I'm not doing things when you ask me like that. Exhausted and on the brink of starvation... It's really tough. Montana became the third celebrity to throw in the towel and quit. I feel really physically weak and I feel really mentally weak and all I want to do is leave. While island conditions left Hollywood actor Eric needing urgent medical attention. You need to see a specialist. When are we doing this? Today. Oh, now? But with camp morale at its lowest, the group's eldest member made a triumphant return. Eric, back! Oh, amazing. I'm so glad I'm back. Oh, my eyes are okay, by the way. <laughs> Feeling, Eric? I feel okay. How do you feel, baby? Yeah, I'm fine. The seven remaining celebrities have now been on the island for just over two weeks. In the distance, Martin Kemp's naked, gone for a quick skinny dip. There must be millions of housewives who would give anything to be in my position right now. Over there, yeah, that's Kempy. His pants are down. Having a little skinny dip. We all feel ugly, we all feel dirty. I haven't looked at myself in the mirror for so long. Universe, give me a toothbrush and some Colgate, please. We all smell bad. I desperately need a wash in the sea, desperately. What's that there, look? Bum bum. I want to try to recreate that iconic scene where Marley in class is under the waterfall on I'm a Celebrity. I'm like a whole flock of fans off the back of it. I'm trying to get the willy in. Right, fish boy. Fish man, fish man. Looking pretty choppy out there, isn't it? Since they found a washed up net six days ago, the camp has been relying on fish as their main source of food. Fingers crossed. With limited success. And today is no exception. For that. Well, yeah. But you've, you've still graduated again. Oh, 
You're like now the Obi-Wan of fishing, not just fish man. Pete is fantastic. I can trust Pete in any situation we've been in. The polar ends of the social spectrum we shouldn't go on, but actually, we're both very different from those perceptions. Like most things in my life, when you've got big hands, things look smaller when you hold them. So actually, this is a massive fish. It's just I've got big hands. I've got little hands. And it's still a little fish. <laughs> my best friend on the island, got to be Crackers. I think he's a great guy. I really, really do think I, I couldn't fool him. It's just a nice geezer. He's a real nice geezer. So there's been a bit of love on the island, and it's been between Mr James Cracknell and Pete Wicks, which is really sweet, and it's funny because you wouldn't, like, put them two together. I mean, they're already talking about getting matching tattoos. And the other day, us two were chatting, having a conversation between three of us, and I felt like a gooseberry. Just sitting there, like, they're talking, like, private jokes. I'm like, not wanted. Yeah, a like proper bromance going on. Oh my God, guys, there's a pig! Right down the end. Wow, that is far out. Where is it? There. there. Where? It's, oh, it's on the beach. I don't see it. Right, right in the corner. Looks really Oh yeah, it. he's black. Yeah. It's a big black pig. He weighs more than 50 pounds, guys. Yeah. I wouldn't want to take him down. No, he's a big one. Wow. That's a lot of bacon. There's a pig on the beach. Yeah. Well, right now. Yeah. 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 I'm not touching it, obviously. A week ago, pescatarian Pete persuaded the rest of the group to survive on fish alone. But the group haven't had a decent catch for three days. I don't think it needs to be eaten because I think we've got protein, but we don't have a yucca and things like that. That's my view. If you want to kill it and eat it, kill it and eat it. I won't say another word. End of. You lot do what you want to do. I am like the dog whisperer of Essex. Um, and my dogs mean the world to me, they're like my kids, and I, I actually value dogs more than I do people, so stick an island with nine dogs and I'll be happy as Larry. Good boy. I've not eaten meat now for five months. It was sort of like a conscious decision that if I couldn't, if I couldn't kill it, I wouldn't eat it. On the island, however hungry I am, I couldn't kill anything. I don't care what you lot do, I will eat separately. We're gonna have to smack it in the head with a stick from long range, aren't we? And that may not knock it out. Or we'll creep up behind and stab it in there. Where your organs are inside the tummy. As soon as we creep up, it's gonna go. But that's that's another option. I don't wanna I don't wanna stick it. I'd rather stab it in the heart, like straight away, then slit its throat. Since I got here, I've lost two stone. And boy, do I want some pork scratchings right now. I'm going to keep really simple. I'm going to ask a series of questions and just show hands, no words, OK? With the appearance of the pig causing tensions in camp, James calls a group meeting. Who is prepared to slit the pig's throat? That's one. OK, who's prepared to cook the pig? I'll do a bad job, but I'll give it a go. Two prepared to cook it. OK, the other last question. If Ojo is happy to do that, his fear is he's going to feel ostracised for doing it. I know there's a few, obviously, objectors in the group. Feeds very quiet in the corner. I'm not a reality TV star, who, as long as their hair looks good and teeth are shiny, they'll get work. I'm a professional athlete. I need to be strong. I need a decent amount of protein. I'm not going to go and risk another injury just because a few guys didn't want to eat a pig. You need it to survive, do what you've got to do. If you don't need it to survive, then I don't see the point. Question to you then, Pete. How long is that net going to last? Don't know. That's what I mean. Don't know. I'm just as hungry as everyone else, but it's just not, a, not something that I can be a part of. And if I can prevent it, then I will do so. 
I think we should leave it like this, right? I'm more than happy to let it go now. If in five days' time that net breaks and we're all starving, I would do it for the team, but I'm not going to do it for a laugh. Trust me, guys, I'm not bloodthirsty. I'm happy to crack on. Pete's quite a, a forceful little spirit. It's all about the food with Pete. It's the fishing and it's the animals and all that. And he has really strong opinions. I wouldn't want to argue with Pete. Piggy, 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 piggy. Hi. Two hours ago, a pig appeared on the beach. Now it's inching closer to camp in search of food. Colin. Look. Colin. Smell that. Come on, you've got big nose. This way. I think I took it upon myself to name Colin, mainly because I thought if we name him, it'd be like having an island pet pig. And no one wants to kill the pet pig. Pete gave him the name in all in a way to protect him. He's a lot cleverer than what you expect him to be. Sometimes it feels good to get out of camp. Leaving the pig behind, Anthony and Joe have headed to the lagoon to set overnight traps for Stingray. We'll make a Stingray breakfast. Oh, some Stingray steak sounds bloody lovely. I've ensured that the island has enough wildlife and vegetation to keep them alive throughout, but only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it, and kill it. I really want to get a good win and really provide for the guys. I've, I've helped contribute quite a lot, but haven't really provided anything. In my life, I feel very much like a provider. My dad left, left home when I was about four. My granddad said to me that I was now the man of the house four years old. Aww. And do you know what? I mean, I took that so literally. As a young boy, 12 years old, I had a dream to represent my country in the Olympic Games, and I was lucky enough to, to do so. Being a boxer, you, you're always, like, pushing yourself to the limits. People die in boxing rings. It, it's, it's that severe, it's that serious in the boxing ring, you're by yourself. I'm looking forward to being part of a team. I want to see it through to the end. And I want to help as many people see it through with me. But if I'm a stingray, right, swimming a beer, and I go to myself, I go, oh, look, there's a fish head. I'll have some of that. Bosh, bites it, hook in his chops. He can't swim, he can't swim. I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Today will be my vengeance, today, I'll catch a stingray or two. I believe I will. I know I will. I'll bring some back for the guys, and that'll be a great way to start any day on this island. While Anthony and Joe set their traps, Salia is taking a break from camp to pray. You know, I asked for us all to get through this intact. It, I ask to look after everyone. And I ask for strength. I work for The One Show as a, a reporter, and I've presented for Trust Me, I'm a Doctor. As an A&E doctor, I'm faced with the fragility of life, how precious our health is. You never know when it might all be taken away from you. Being in a place where help is not that readily available, and you've got to rely on your own clinical skills and your knowledge. That's a good opportunity for you as a medic to see if you can make it. I do fast during Ramadan. At least you get to feast at the end of the day. The last few days have been tough. They've pushed everyone. I think people are hungry, and it's all rising to the surface at the moment. Mm. What's your favourite war film? Anthony and Eric try and take their minds off their hunger by discussing a subject other than food. Saving Private Ryan does everything you want a movie to do for you. 
It, it makes you it makes you sentimental and an epic classic perfect movie about war. When he when he says to his wife at the end, like tell me I've lived a good life. Oh no! <laughs> it chokes me up. <laughs> amazing, amazing movie. Favorite love film? Pretty Woman. It's got to be one of the one of, one of everybody's ten best favorite films. Every walk of life. Yeah. You know, yeah. Every it, generation. Every generation. That movie works on every level. I hate to sound biased because of my sister. I mean, Gear's a great actor. Good guy, good actor. He's good in that movie, blah, blah, blah. But my sister. Stole the show. Oh my God. She was perfect. Oh my God, I can't explain how much I could do with a nice breakfast. I feel as weak as a kitten. Before sunrise the next morning, with the rest of the camp still sleeping, Anthony sets off to check his traps for Stingray. Well, he laid three traps. And, uh, oh no, they just didn't fancy it. Really thought I was taking a couple of stingrays back for the camp. Oh. Almost feel worse now than I did before. Deflated from being unsuccessful, I think. Oh my God, he's in the camp. As Salia carries out her daily medical checks, an unwelcome visitor has reappeared. He wants you to become a veterinarian, Doc. Not near my clinic, bugger off. Go away, piggy. Oh, he's pissing over there, look. Out! Oh, go away. I'm trying to keep everyone upright and fight infection, and it's wandering around, urinating and pooing everywhere. It's upsetting Sal. Yeah, it is, actually. To be honest, if, if Sal doesn't want him here, then that's, that's enough reason not to have him here. What if someone did want to kill him now? What would you say, Pete? I would point blank, I would stop them doing it now. We had the conversation, you had the opportunity. People decided not to. Now, you can't just kill him because he's annoying. Say there's no fish over the next two days. Say there's not. What do you say, then? You've got a week left and you should be absolutely fine because you've eaten more than enough to be here. The energy's not good for Colin at the minute, so I think he'll be happier in a... It's yeah. feng shui is not quite right. Yeah, you know, obviously there'll be some parts of the island where he'll probably be more wanted than he currently is here. Concerned that Colin the pig could end up as a group's next meal, Pete decides to lead it away to another part of the island, accompanied by his right-hand man, James. Colin's about to make grown men look fucking ridiculous. Good on him. We'll tempt him with coconut, a little tap on the rump if he gets stuck, and... It's about a 15 minute walk, 10 minute walk. I imagine it's going to take a couple of hours with Colin, though. Looking for Piggy. They do speak Spanish here, don't they? Here he is. He's answering me. He's actually answering me. <laughs> Maybe you can speak the language. Look, there he is. Look what I've got, Colin. Wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it. That's it, that's it. Colin. Good stuff. Colin. There you go. Come on. Okay, all right. There we go. Walk down. keys. Down. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Good boy, follow me. You're such a good boy. You are daddy's little piggy. Come on, Colin, you're my man. You're the man. 
Pete has been very good at connecting with everyone on the camp, but he showed a unique skill in talking to Colin the pig at his level. Now, I know people are going to say dolphins and pigs are the most intelligent animals besides humans. I, on the other hand, think Pete is basically on the same level as a pig. Colin, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. His highlight of, of his experience on the island, this is Pete, is taking the pig for a walk, which, for somebody I feel has got pretty close to Pete, I felt a bit usurped, to be honest. The pig will be back. Um, the pigs are not stupid. He liked us. He liked our habitat. He'll be back. Wait, uh, crackers. We need to get out on these fish now. The tide's so high, then it's gone. Fuck's sake. Having spent over two hours leading the pig away from camp, Pete and James have missed low tide, their only window to check for fish in the nets. <laughs> To get the fish, you're probably looking at 15 foot down. We just left it a bit late. For sake. Just needed to be here quicker. As extreme hunger kicks in and energy levels drop, it's so easy to take your eye off the ball. Not only have the group missed their only chance of getting fish today, but by saving the pig, they've made a potentially huge survival error, walking away from a valuable food source. Martin. How many fish? The net's too deep down to get any fish out of it. You know, it's too low. But, but there are fish, huh? There's fish in there, but it's just too deep down. Well, the way we've secured the net, it's literally bang on perfect where we left it. It's just the tide's so high. So hopefully, if we get time, depending on the dark, it's just a timing thing. We rely on the nets 100%. Now we are a pescatarian camp. We decided just to live on the fish. But that means, with one source of food, that net is our lifeline. We've got no dinner tonight because we were taking Colin the bloody pig away from camp. Colin does not know how lucky he is. Glastonbury. Uh, we've just seen the last band. It's been raining all night and all day. Kings of Leon on, on next. Ah, oh, the atmosphere is great. We're all rocking. <laughs> Overnight, a tropical storm has ripped through camp. Island cook Joe is preparing the last remaining papaya to be shared amongst the group. It's pretty tough out here. And it's like making food out of nothing, really. Just want an avocado. Absolutely craving an avocado and a poached egg. You don't talk about life anymore. You don't talk about each other's stories. You're talking about food. Yeah, a pig again. Oh, my God. I can't believe he's back already. <laughs> Yesterday, Pete led the pig deep into the jungle, but it has already found its way back to camp. Why do you keep feeding it and bringing it in? Because it, it smells, it smells, it smells food. To be honest, it's a sign of how we live. As the days go by, we're becoming less hygienic and more people living in a dump, so our boundary of cleanliness closes in, and Colin then closes in on the stuff we leave behind. I think it's unhygienic when we're already in unhygienic conditions. It will be pooing all over the place. Well, that's an issue. Mm. What can I do? I think you can start to do, actually, crackers. In fact, I'll do it. Fuck's sake. Yesterday, Pete and James spent several hours walking the pig away from camp and missed low tide. Their only opportunity to check the net for fish. Now the net has become tangled in the storm. What the fuck I'm doing with this knot here? 
this is our one net. We had the conversation about the pig. Yeah. And you were saying this net will last three weeks or two weeks, and I was going, I don't think it will. And we now have the pig lying there, asleep, and any one of us go up and kill it right now. Well, we've named him, I've walked him, we're not killing the pig. And yet we're... We're detangling a net. Pete has led the charge of fish, he doesn't eat meat at home. So he knows he, need, he needs food, he knows the cat needs food. There's pressure on him to come up trumps. You say this and get it straight back out tomorrow. And we'll be cooking again. If I was a meat eater, I think I might have fought for my right to eat that pig. Frustrated by his failure to provide food for the group, and with pork and fish off the menu, Anthony has headed out into the jungle again, this time on a solo hunt. I feel like my legs are shackled, and every footstep I'm carrying a big boulder behind me. I work so hard and sacrifice so much and give it everything, yet I never seem to get what I feel like I deserve. I haven't got my wind. I go out on my on my hunt, and so far I've brought nothing back. Is that a pig? I heard a pig snort. Definitely, it's quite an unmistakable sound. Um, so <laughs> like that. <laughs> looks tired. The entire camp is suffering from the effects of the lack of food, but James is suffering more than most. Crackers is not overly happy today. He's just a bit down and he's a bit fed up with things, I think. He doesn't feel too great. He is tired, he looks drained. We've hammered it. Survival is about a lot more than just hard work. The mental strains of intense hunger in such a harsh environment can be tough. Despite his best efforts, the failure to catch any fish and the divisions in camp over what to do with a pig have taken their toll on James. Just for today, give yourself a chance, because you ain't going to fix otherwise. I've had the shit since day two, and we're now on day a lot more than two. My old coach used to say to me, to jump high, you have to bend low, and there's no doubt that we're all finding our low points now, and it's how you respond to it. I'm looking at you, and physically, I can see that you don't look great. Oh, I just want to get out of camp. It's a tough place. It is a really tough place, and this is a battle of the environment, your hunger, and your mind. James does a brilliant job, right? But he wanders around like a prisoner of a war. You know, he's lost so much weight, and he's pushing himself to the edge. I just wonder, is James beating himself up about other things? I was cycling in America. I got smacked by a fuel truck going 70 miles an hour, and I was uh, put to a coma. You know, I was very difficult to live with. Yeah, it, was, it was definitely harder on the family than me. It took me a, a really long time to empathise with what they were going through. I think it's a perfect time on the island to reset some of the habits you've got into. I think it's going to be a really positive experience for me in terms of actually creating a relationship or relationships with people that actually I probably wouldn't have met or created relationships with previously. Thinking, OK, there's more to most people than you, you absolutely realise. OK, let's go 100 metres away where you know about. No, no, we're going to your spot. Unwilling to rest, and with wingman Pete occupied elsewhere, James recruits Eric to go on the search for firewood. So why are you so angry with me? I'm not, just let's just fucking go. Just stop talking about it. Let's go. Every single one of us is unhappy. 
Every single one of us was cranky because we were so desperately hungry. James is not a gentle giant. You need to have some place in your mind to fall back on and just think, right, I'm going to get through this. I can get through this. I will get through this. And if that place isn't there, then you're, you're going to struggle. And I'm, I struggle for the first bit of every day. Definitely. Too late. Well, we can go that way. We'll bring the wood back over the top. Too, too much work. Come on. Well, we can go up here then. What? Why don't we go over the rock there then? I'm not really interested. Too much work with the wood. That's too hard. Coming around be easy. Coming out is too hard. Will will I get it at the next low tide? When we walk over the mountain together, down the beach, we can get it ready, we can bring it halfway back. I don't think I can physically do it, James. I, 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 I know I can physically walk around. I don't know if I can physically walk over. There's only one little hill on the way up, so. No, James, I, I was looking at it. OK. He's been a bit, a bit cantankerous. He yelled at me today. Slowly does it. Before they return to camp empty-handed, Eric forces James to take a break so that they can clear the air. One of the things coming on here I was, I was worried about was that I would get frustrated and blow up. And I, I, I know I've blown up a few times here, but that's one thing I wanted to control. And also, some of the things I'm really lucky to have, I take for granted. What I'm struggling with is missing home. I miss the kids enormously. I want to have a conversation with my wife that I probably haven't had and should have had over the last five years. Now, I don't know how she stuck with me for a few years and the way I was behaving after my accident, and I'm definitely different to the person she married. I just want to tell her that some of the reasons I've had for the way I've approached life have been excuses rather than reasons. The group gather for their morning meeting to discuss the food situation and the reappearance of the pig in camp. Last night was the first time I thought I might leave, mm. and it's nothing to do with the conditions. Because of the pig? Mm. What can we do? I don't know. What, what can we do? We... I don't know. I just need mm. not to be here. Or I don't need to be here. Well, and that's, yeah, but that's, that's not an option, you not being here. Living with a pig, it's so against what I am. I'm a Muslim, my faith's very important to me. I cover my hair, I pray five times a day, I fast. Religiously, we consider them unclean. The only suggestion we've got is either having to tie it up somewhere, which uh, is, is a bit cruel, depending on, because we don't have the right stuff to tie it in case it gets tangled and strangled itself, or we walk it away in a different, a different place. There's a big, thick bit of rope down that beach and then tie it up, and then you can take it somewhere later. All right. That's sorted then. I'm really battling against some very, very core fundamental beliefs. Even the most lapsed Muslim, they'll, they'll probably drink alcohol, whatever. But there's one thing they don't do is eat a fucking bacon sandwich in the morning. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. And for now, we can just tie him over here somewhere on a short rope. I'd love some bacon right now, but that, that ship has sailed. However much I want to do that, I don't want to upset Pete or Sally. This pig is potentially a massive source of protein and fat. In survival, when it comes to food, there really is little room for sentiment. Their decision not to eat the pig, with the fishing net failing, could become a catastrophic error. We need 
need some vegetation. We need some carbohydrates desperately. With Pete taking care of the pig and the food situation now critical, James teams up with Anthony to go on a hunt for yucca. Out there and then up to the left, but I'll cross that ravine and then head up. I, I am a very positive person. That's why I go out every single day and think, yeah, today's a day. Today's a day where I'll get something big. I, I give it my all and I just, you know what, just keep plugging away. If we don't get it, then we're, everyone's going to be in such a bad state tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Everything tries to fucking trip you up. It could be anywhere. All we have to do is keep looking. Man, it's hard to find. Really hard to find. To be honest, I'm, I'm pretty tempted to go back. Fuck me, hang on. Straight ahead. Oh yeah, get down on your knees and pray to Zod. That. How, how similar is that? Yucca. Oh, beauty! That is awesome. Then it should be easy to dig up. You fucking yes, beauty! Right, come here. Um, Amazing, that's dinner. That is dinner. Colin lives to fight another day. Less than an hour ago, the group decided to move the pig away from camp, and Pete tied it up at the other end of the beach. What's wrong with him? He's cold. Oh my god. Fucking hell. Fuck. Colin, come on. Colin? Shit. Guys, I think it strangled itself. Well, it's dead. My fault. This is not the outcome. Worried about Pete now, I don't know where Pete is. I'm not going to talk about it, I'm just going to sit with you. Come on, let me sit with you. You can't go now. We just got a few days to go. Please, please, Dad. You know it's an accident. I tied it up. And that's dead. It was still an accident. He is heartbroken. Just heartbroken. He wants to go. It's not your fault. No. Oh. <laughs> I said it's not your fault, so. Where? Earlier today, Pete tied up the pig at the end of the beach, and now it has accidentally strangled itself on the rope. Like, religion's religion, it's your views, and you stand by that, and I applaud you for that. That ain't your fault, right? Tried to cut the tree branch off with a knife, but by that point, it was a little bit too late, and, um, Obviously, died. You know, I spent my entire time on this island trying to make a point that we didn't have to do that, we didn't have to kill anything. We're all responsible for the death of the pig. Now, what happens to the pig now? Do you just bury him so he's died for nothing? Or do you use him? and eat him. Island zero, Cragnell, and go go one. <laughs> ah. Unaware of the situation in camp, 
Anthony and James return with a bag full of yucca, the group's first food win in four days. You right, Pete? No, not really. What's the matter? Pig standing himself and died. Oh, fucking hell, sorry. Oh, fucking hell. OK, mate. Pete, you right? The pig strangled itself and died. Oh. I covered it in palm leaves. Yeah, it's bury it, aren't it? Bury it or eat it. Hmm? Bury it or eat it. Bang! We had it. I had images in my head. The guys would write a song for us. They'd engrave our names in the trees. We'd come back to a hero's, a hero's welcome. Meh, not so much. OK, James, take it away. If the group want to eat the pig, they need to make a decision quickly. Otherwise, the meat will spoil. While Pete maintains a vigil, the rest of the group gather to discuss their options. A simple question now of... We're going to bury it in the jungle and let the, the jungle eat it. There's enough living things out here that we'll just devour without going to waste. Or... Are we going to skin it, gut it, and eat it? Who, if the, if the pig is on a plate, will eat it? Yeah, I'll eat it. I'd eat it. If it was cooking on the grill and someone asked me if I wanted some, if I said no, I'd be lying to myself. See, I don't eat meat. Even though I won't have anything to do with it, I do think those who want to eat it should eat it because it's an animal, it's dead, and of course you should eat it and not waste it. If you're going to butcher it, you need to hurry up and do it. So why don't we take it up on the rocks so all the excess can wash away? Pete's here now, Pete's here now. Hi, Pete. I came in one booth that I was in different swap. Most people fall. I don't know why I'm going to do it. I'm going to pull up the whole time and say, fuck, I might see if he's trying to go. Because I knew it was wrong to sleep it in. And it's dead. So, like staying and everyone eating shit, you have to be staying and don't be eating the pig. I leave him, I just run away from from what I've actually done. Yeah. Man, that is fun. So I don't really know what I'm supposed to do, but I would prefer to keep my experience. I spent more time with, with Pete than, than any other person on the island. He not only has his views, but he explains them well. He done everything he could to preserve the pig's life. He's the last person who should hold some blame. I felt really bad for him. Oh, Pete, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll butt in, mate. Um, it was a group decision. So please don't feel like you've killed the pig because, honestly, mate, it's not, it's not that way. And hopefully in time you can kind of come to realise that. But please stay because um, you, mate, you're too invaluable. You're too invaluable to go. I really, really, really want to eat the pig, but um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm more respectful than that and I'm not as selfish as that and I don't want to upset you any more pigs, obviously you're already upset, so I, I say we bur I bury, bury the pig. Okay. No, we give it a good send off. This is nobody's fault, we are the Magnificent Seven. Yay! Come on! Come on! <laughs> I think Pete is much kinder in his point of view towards animals than he is towards people. I couldn't eat his pig because then I'd be somebody who ate Pete's pig. Like using using him as a food source would be disrespectful based on what had happened. So I said my piece, and, and thankfully the group agreed. Have you got one? Yeah. I got one. Ready? Come on, let's go. Rather than eat the pig, the islanders agree to help Pete to bury it at sea. Take it easy. 
Oh, 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 oh. All right, man. Sorry, dude. Oh. Mate. Okay. Sweet yourself out. Thank you. Good. It was hard for anyone who was prepared to eat the pig to watch it floating out on a funeral pyre. It's a pig. It's, it's a pig. If I get that send off and I go, I'll take that. What we just got to hope is that he doesn't turn up tomorrow morning, you know, back on the tide. I can't quite believe that we threw away a, a dead pig that could have been eaten. And now we're back on hoping that there's more than one fish in there today. It's fuck all in it. Yeah. Next time on the island. We haven't got any dinner. It's not a disaster. It's almost becoming um, a dictatorship here. I've just asked you for it, and you don't know where it is. So, so it doesn't. It. Okay, who? I don't know. Pete. It's cracky. <laughs> First century, there's no escaping the cult of celebrity. This old woman in Sainsbury's turned around and said, I knew it was you, I recognised your breathing. Idolised by adoring fans. There's nothing more fun than being famous. Celebs enjoy living in the lap of luxury. I feel like my eyelashes are coming off. Oh, no, they're not. I want to find out what happens when they're stripped of the trappings of fame. I've always got a fresh mani-pedi. People might think, oh, she doesn't want to get her hands dirty, but I will. And left to fend for themselves. Is this a good idea? I don't know if I want to do this, you know. <laughs> for the next four weeks, I'm abandoning ten celebrities. 8,000 miles from home on a remote Pacific island. With just the clothes on their back. I mean, you don't know you've lived them until you've shit in the sea and then swim away from it. And a few basic tools. Anthony, come on! I'm going for the big stuff. I'm going for the crocodiles. They'll only eat what they can catch and kill. Why is this happening when we're top left? I think I'm going to die on this island. <laughs> Quick, she's trapped. Use your knife. Pitted against the forces of nature. It's a knife injury. It looks like this is in my finger. As tropical storm season rages around them. Montana's got swimming goggles to protect her eyelashes. They've got to be protected. Going great. Oh, wow. Gnarly, dude. Welcome to the fire. <laughs> yeah! Is that a rubber Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting away. We're dead and this is a dream. Stop talking. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. Pushed to the limits of human endurance. <laughs> you like to... Do you think I want to be in this position? Who will have the grit and determination to survive? Yeah, let's get going. 21 days ago, I marooned 10 celebrities on a remote Pacific island. I can see the beach! Oh, Pete, paradise! Pete, thank you. Led by Pete, they quickly set up camp. Good night, you lovely people. We're losing the fire! Leave it now, leave it now! But the brutal island conditions pushed people to breaking point. Please, can you come and get me now? And three of the celebs quit. Bye, guys. Love you. There goes the drama. I can't do this anymore. Yeah! <laughs> Pescatarian Pete persuaded the group to survive just on fish. Look at that. God, it's beautiful. 
Mm. That's a lot of bacon. But when an unexpected visitor split the camp... My view is I don't think it needs to be eaten. We're not killing the pig. The fallout ended in tears. <laughs> and rather than eat it, they gave the pig a burial at sea. Magnificent Seven. Come on! Come on! The most ridiculous thing I've ever seen on Palava. Real Palava yesterday. A pig got a better send off than former Prime Ministers. <laughs> Since they found the net two weeks ago, Pete has persuaded the celebrities to survive on fish as their only source of protein. But for the past two days, they've caught nothing. Good morning, Pete. It's almost becoming um, a dictatorship here. Pete's got a massive influence over people. Now we are a pescatarian camp. With one source of food, fish, that net is our lifeline. There's loads out there, but Pete's got to catch them. My wee's the colour of honey. Mine is so much darker. Do you know what yours is there, mine? Look. Gold. <laughs> <laughs> Concerned at how the lack of food is affecting the group's health, Dr. Salia is carrying out medical checks. OK, moment of truth. Martin. So, you've gone from 210 to 181. So, how much have I lost? Two stone? Yeah. I'm starting to feel like I'm starving. Can I do your waist, Martin? Still exhausted. I think if this goes on any longer, the thought of why am I here? I should be at home. Who's going to come into my head? Right, James. You're skinny, dude. You're like Tarzan on a diet. We're losing weight fast, and we're hungry. You are 175. Wow. He's lost 30 pounds. Physically, I feel shit. Four or five out of 10. Generally, one of my highlights of my day is I have eight o'clock poo every morning. Yeah. And to be honest, my day's downhill from then, so <laughs> I really enjoy it. And I've had a month of nothing like that at all. People are running out of reserves. We're on our last legs. Right now, the whole camp has got to push through their exhaustion grit and determination and that drive to work through multiple failures is integral to survival. So it's so important at this stage that they find food and soon. Go check his next thing. Go on. Every morning at low tide, Pete and James head out to check the net for fish. Did it? Nothing. Let's check it again, you think? Do you know what I really don't know whatever we can. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. We've given it enough time to catch a couple. An absolute bum fight, isn't it? So fucked off. It's fucking stupid. There was nothing in the nets, which is a bit disappointing. So I feel a bit stressed and a bit anxious about all that, to be honest with you. The good news, Joe, is there's no cooking. The bad news is there's no fish. <laughs> nada, 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 nada. How do your legs feel? Um, my legs feel like shite, to be honest with you. Why? They feel weak. It's so weak, I don't feel like myself. You know. Two weeks ago, Martin developed cuts on his feet and legs that have now become infected. My ankles are giving me such pain. It's so frustrating. I just hope that the other guys are not kind of behind my back saying, oh, Kempi's not pulling his weight. But I'm just saying generally, I just feel like shite. My life at points has been really glamorous. This is just a trip through 
in the 80s. Spandau Ballet. It was kind of like five boys went to Benidorm for 10 years. So it was that kind of chaos. Why am I going on the island? Coming up for 57 now. I have everything I want. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> in a funny way, it's kind of like midlife crisis. I'm testing myself. You gonna be all right while I'm away? What sort of skills would I bring to the island? <laughs> Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. <laughs> See you later. Bye. See you later, Pete. Thanks. I have a feeling we're coming home with Yucca. Yeah. Despite the pain in his legs, Martin heads out with Dr. Salia to go hunting for yucca. After not eating for days, I can't sit around and watch everybody else do stuff. You know, I've got to be part of it. Oh, what about over there? Go around. <sighs> I don't know, I've lost my sense of where we are. We came up and then we turned right at the top. So that's, that's right. where we are. So this is where we were. Okay, so let's go left. Saw, but I thought you saw something. Mm, right. Wait, so here. That way. Are you all right? Got some no energy in my legs. Let's take a breath. There is no rush. It's so exhausted. My legs. Is it yucca? It might be, so. <gasps> After two hours scouring the jungle, Martin thinks he spotted something. Oh, my God! Is it? I don't know. Let's wait and see. No, it's not that. I don't think that's right. It's just a root. Hmm. Nope. I think I'm done. No energy. Home, home, home. Get up. Ah, no good. Four hour trip for nothing. Shit. Damn it. Hope we don't die here. Oh. Careful. Do yourself an injury there if that's no. it. Oh. oh. Let it pull it out. Pull it out. Ah. Oh. MP's gonna crap soon. Yeah. He's gonna sit down. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <sighs> what is it, Martin? <sighs> you have to stop now. Just a crazy idea. Let's give you some water. Yeah. I am really concerned about my feet now because the scratches and the bumps and scrapes that I've got are turning into ulcers. If it goes over a certain stage, obviously, I need to get off the island. Can anyone get me some kindling from the beach? Tiny little bits. Bastard, he's fine. Such a bastard. Suffering the after effects of yesterday's failed yucca hunt, Martin has been confined to camp. <sighs> so, nothing will catch apart from this termite mound. It's the only dry thing there is. I'm fucking struggling, to be honest with you. Yeah. I feel like I'm losing it. What am I doing, you know, sitting here? in this kind of never-ending cycle of filth in the camp and being soaking wet. It's shite. Nightmare. To be honest with you at the moment, I'm not quite sure why I'm here now. Why don't I just go home? You know, I want to call it a day and go home. Joe, where'd you find the limpets I'm using for bait? 
Go all the way down there. How, how far a walk is it, honey? About a quarter mile, half mile? Oh, why don't you just go there and you'll see snails? The islanders have been provided with basic fishing equipment. As soon as the rain clears, Eric is eager to provide a meal for the group. OK, where's a good fishing spot? Over there. Is it still there or is it rough? Oh. Older gear, no idea. That's Eric. Pete, it reminds me a little bit of the disposition of my father. Not age-wise, but just uh, always a bit angry-wise. And very disapproving. It's a group of people I've never seen before, I've never worked with, I'm, I've never heard of, and I'm here with them. And uh, you must treat everybody with the same respect you expect. Oh, this is spooky. If I fall down, I can really freaking hurt myself. Oh. This is crazy. This isn't working. Courtney face. It's too rough out there for my taste to fish. It's a real waste of energy, that. Pete's a little rough with an occasional testosterone explosion. <laughs> but you know, it's all good. They sent me straight home and MRI'd it, and it was massive. With his infected feet and legs still causing him pain, Martin rests by the fire and tells the group about a much bigger test, his brain tumour. Oh, when I came out of the operation, man, I, I couldn't see out one eye, I couldn't walk on one leg. I was standing still and I, I wanted to walk over that way, so I would walk over that way. Wow, gee, uh, neurological. Uh, but the thing that saved me, absolutely <laughs> saved me, was EastEnders. Because mm. before I went to EastEnders, I didn't even know if I could remember lines. Mm. And then when I turned up and I had to play, I had to do um, the character of Steve Owen. Yeah, Steve Owen was so full of life. Mate, you were amazing. But he, was <laughs> so, he, was, amazing. he was so full of charisma and confidence that that kind of helped me. I hope in the coming week, you know, the, the last week, that the mood lightens a little bit. I think people, when they come and talk to me, get a chance to chill out a little bit. You have to be best friends with everyone. Otherwise, you can't survive. There's not long to go in there, and I want to see us all finish together. Right, plan. I'm going to go spearfishing. After Eric's unsuccessful fishing trip earlier, Pete is making another attempt to resolve the group's dire food situation. Crackers, you got a knife? No. Eric, you know where the, the, the knife is? I think it's in one of the knife cases. For the last three weeks, Eric has been responsible for looking after the knives in camp. Fuck's sake. What am I doing wrong, Pete? I've just asked you for it, and you don't know where it is. Somebody so borrowed it. it. Okay, who? I don't know. Well, they, so it because make everybody borrows a knife from, uh, from so Judge listen, James. We just need to know where the knives are. Fucking hell. God. Sorry to make you cranky, Pete. It's not about being cranky, Eric. Stop saying that. Oh, there's a knife here. Mm. Mm. I wish Pete wasn't so condescending and cruel. Cracky. I've tried to keep everyone as fed as possible with the nets, but it's suddenly, fuck me, I'm starving. You're not starving, you're a bit hungry. Calm the fuck down. Fucking cunts! Oh, fuck. Ah, I've got to go back. I've cut myself on a knife. Sally, huh? Cut my finger on a knife. Shit, okay. You got all saying you're hungry. I'm hungry, mate. Okay. Such you a fucking idiot. These things happen. 
Pete has had a knife injury. It's still bleeding. Is someone around to give me a hand? Concerned about the severity of Pete's cut, Dr. Salia radios my safety team. We will come and review over. Fucking doesn't want any stitches. What happens if you need stitches there? So do I have to go? I ain't going. We can take you for the treatment stitches and everything. Who was going to do the next? Oh. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not leaving. I need to be here. With Pete adamant he isn't going to leave the island for treatment, my medical team come up with a temporary solution. I think we should bandage it and position it Bring so that it immobilises it. We're 100% happy with it all being Fine. done here. Fine. Thank God for that. The good thing is, there's no tendon damage. I'm not worried about the finger, I'm more worried about the necks. You right? It's just annoying, mate, isn't it? Yeah. If I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. We need to get back out there, then. Yeah. Why is he so unfriendly? We had a chat, um, and Pete said he hasn't got any achievements. He wants to show the world that he's more than just a guy who comes to us on TV. Uh. Pete's been working really hard, and I think he thinks other people aren't working as hard as him. Because that, he almost looks down his nose at people around him, that he almost ostracises himself. Pete, mate, rather than killing yourself, ask me, I'll do it. You haven't got to be the person to always do the big thing. It's fuck all, innit? Yeah, for fuck's sake. Right, everyone here? With the continuing failure of the net to provide food, Pete calls a meeting to reassure the group. It's not ideal. It's like a blind panic. We're never going to eat again. Uh, the nets are absolutely perfect, but there was nothing in it, which is a bit disappointing. I know we haven't got any dinner, but it's not a disaster. Pete has turned into a different person on this island. When he came on, he was funny all the time, and his mood brought everybody up. But the last week, it's kind of like no one can do anything right. Can I fish? We'll handle the fish side of things. Pete's rocking the boat. Uh, I don't think we all know how to handle him, really, and he's winding us all up. Anyone else got anything to say? Pete's got to be careful not to create divisions in the camp. It's important he doesn't isolate himself because a team that supports each other is much more likely to thrive. Been everyone happy? Yep. Yeah! It doesn't feel like the camp is together anymore. It feels like it's kind of splitting apart. We've got to get you talking to Cockney before you go back, Eric. Hey, the boat is looking better. Why? What does that mean? Boat, boat race face. Um, your boat's looking better. slang for you. <laughs> <laughs> your boat's looking better. <laughs> oh, I fucking miss home today. I miss my mum. I really miss my dogs. I feel bad because the group is looking to me to provide food. You know, I almost get nervous every time I go to check the nets, and it's not an exact science, and uh, I get very defensive about it. Sort of underestimated that it's going to be as much of a challenge as what it is. Which way? Let's explore this side first. With the food situation in camp now critical, Joe and Anthony head out into the jungle to hunt. 
What's that there? That's not yucca, is it? Everything's looking like yucca for me now. No. Oh, come on. Are we lost? I won't get you lost, Josephine. The only way we will eat is if we keep looking. See anything? Look! Mangoes. You beauty! There's loads here. There's a whole little community. Let me get out of your way. Right. Oh! oh did fuck. I get you? Yeah, you did. I'll do it towards me, so to get you. Have that! I've got quite a few. Right, let me collect. These big ones are great. Let's go back and do some stewing. Keep those boys happy. Come on, Jessica. We got mangoes. Go, go Joe. And Joe. flipping stuff. Go, go, Joe. Wow, pretty great. Well done, guys. Gonna make stewed mango, man. Love it. Wow. Yeah, I'd say those are done. The mangoes will provide the group with a small but vital boost of calories. These are done. You look clean and neat, but very, very impoverished. You look exhausted. I feel a bit up. You look like you're on vacation. And uh, I look old. Oh, it smells so nice. I think everybody but Joe looks like shit. Joe has improved. Yeah. Oh, oh thank you so much. Oh, oh the smell. Oh. oh, Joe. That's so nice. It's just something sweet. Oh, it's like stewed apple. Oh, beautiful. That was just delicious. That was uh, first meal in two days. Can't tell you what a difference that makes to you. Joe, they're gorgeous. To have little stewed fruit in your bowl was just what everybody needed. I couldn't give two shits. Tastes like potpourri. I think there's uh, lobster. So we should build a raft. So not only you want to build a raft, you want to build a raft that catches lobster. Yeah, like, you don't aim high, do you? Thermador. Jesus. Thermador. So you want a glass bottom raft so you can see the lobster. <laughs> you're, you're, really, you're raising the game here, Kempi. Energised by the mangoes that Joe found and cooked yesterday, Martin has woken up with a plan to find another food source. If we can build a raft and grab some of those lobsters, and that might lighten the mood a little bit for people. Because at the moment, we are stuck with this fish net, and that's not enough. The raft experiment, Kempi's little dream boat. Obviously, I am fish boy, fish man, fish Jedi, but by the sounds of it, there might be some langoustines or an octopus and things a little bit further out that we can't quite get to. Get down, guys. Let's do it. Oh, so those are the best bits. With a net currently failing, Martin is seizing the initiative with a plan to dive for food further out to sea. I think we should put two on this side and two on that side and then give it a test. Right. I don't know if that'll be enough. Okay, is that raft? Good luck, guys. That looks good. Let's see what happens. All right, then. First of all, let's see how high up this sits in the water. If it sinks, you're a useless prick. It will be fine. It's not going to sink. Fingers crossed, you can dive down. I mean, best case scenario, a couple of lobsters, seafood platter maybe. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, we're on. You two, stand side. Don't be longer rather than shorter. What we've built here is some reef. We're going left, but we're going right. Oh, what left? I'm trying, mate. Right. It's very rocky for me over this side. 
As Martin's raft struggles to stay afloat, the strong current is dragging them off course. Just carry on out, right, until we hit that drop. Unable to navigate to their original destination, Martin and his crew have been forced to make a diversion and dive for food closer to shore. I wouldn't go any closer, so if he's off, if we get swept from that rock, we're going to be stuck. Yeah. James, yeah. Do, you, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I'll have time to jump in there. You all right? Good luck. God, I hope we find food. What's the answer, really? Oh, good. No lobster down there, or anything. Uh, no. One. This is just so shit. Nothing, eh? Nothing, Josephine. Thumbs down, I'm afraid, guys. I'd work that because we just float them out. Pete can be quite sure of his answers, he can get a bit aggy sometimes. This is tough. This is a tough experience, and everyone's working really hard. We all get grouchy. Some are maybe better at hiding it than others. Well, the net looks good anyway. Let's hope there's something in it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Back at camp, Pete heads back out into the sea with James to check the net. We have fish. That thing right. That's it. Sharp. You're right with that? Yeah. Fuck. It got my finger. Whilst checking the net with James, Peters encountered a nurse shark. Finger. Look after, give me the shot. You look after. You got. I've got the shot. Look after your fucking finger. You got it. I've got it. I've got it. Oh my god. Shark attack. My god. He's lucky he's got his finger, isn't he? It's lucky he's got his hands. Jesus. Thank God you're all right. Never been called to a shark attack victim. It's quite painful, I'll give you, you know. Yeah. And I'm not bad with pain. Well, you've just been bitten by a shark, mate. Did you clamp and hold? Uh, no, just tickle me, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, Dan, if you lot don't say this is the best meal you've had since we've been here, I'll be raging. The fact that you've got ten fingers still yeah. and we've got a shark, I think that's, that's me, honestly. Yeah, me. <laughs> With the celebrities on the brink of starvation, Pete's visit to the net has inadvertently provided the group with their biggest source of food so far. 
What a day. Yeah, I've just survived a show, you know. Has anyone got a shark attack story? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, well, I have. You know, I'm sure that story's gonna come out a few times for years and years to come, and I'm sure every time it comes out, the shark's gonna be a foot longer. We know how us geezers like to exaggerate the length of things and the size of things. So if you look the teeth point inwards and then serrated edges, you can... And that's what you can't get out. Bloody hell. But on a serious note, what a cool story to have. I'm absolutely over the moon based on the fact that everyone moaning about whether or not I can still provide fish. What do you fancy? You fancy a bit of a change? You had too much fish? Shark? Fancy shark? I'll give you a bit of shark. It's the heaviest fish or anything that's come out of the sea that I've ever come across. Listen, Pete was really brave. He's so stubborn. But hats off to Pete. Without him, we wouldn't have made it. What a way to wrap this whole experience up. Shark steak cut up will be lovely. The meat looks amazing. You can see the muscle. That's what it's all going to taste really good. But that was one mad mofo experience. Let's go and cook that shark up. OK. It's amazing, Joe. I would say... That's done, isn't it? That's done. Oh, gosh, it's hot. Hot, hot, oh, hot, man. hot. Yeah. Looks like good meat there. This, um, is it one of them free-range finger-fed shark? <laughs> <laughs> Give me your bowl. The shark was a metre long. Now, it's a small shark in shark measurements. That's a big shark when it's on your hand. So the whole camp was impressed. It was far out. For a vicious creature, he's tender. It was frightening. Everybody kind of grew up a little bit. And if Pete hadn't been the grown-up he is, it would have turned hysterical. It tastes like Pete's fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pete, thank you very much for this. Pete, thanks. I'm pretty sure my everyone here can say that, mate, you're well more than just lad from Essex. Absolutely. I take my hat off to you, sterling job all, all for the last three weeks, and today just, um, just you know, exemplifies that 100%. I appreciate that, big man. That means a lot, man. Like, the last week, I think, has probably been the toughest. As much as I fight with some of you, Eric, I'm very grateful to every single one of you putting up with me, being a dickhead at times. I couldn't ask for, for, for six better people to be stuck on an island with. I second that. With their stomachs full, the islanders take a rare break. The Magnificent Seven, we said, we're going to make it to the end. Yeah, and the Magnificent we Seven we have made it to the end. So, so well done. Ooh. When I leave here, I'm going to miss everyone. We are a proper family. And, you know, in the face of adversity, families come together. It makes me feel special because we are the only people that will understand what happened here, how bad it was, how good it was and that bonds us for life. After nearly a month, it's the celebrity's final night on the island. I want to say thank you to everybody, and I've enjoyed it so much, the experience, even though sometimes it's been really hard. And I've made you a little trinket that you oh, can all take. Yeah. Proper gifts, all not you. just one. Oh, oh, God, Joe. What else do you do in What else time? would Joe <laughs> Wood oh. fucking do? Pick one you like. I want to be hot, I love. Thank you, babe. Oh, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Joe, so much. I mean, I'll be honest with you, Joe, I'm probably not going to wear it for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, but I think a stone is a good way of describing what we've been yeah. solid and unbreakable, you know what I mean? Guys, I just want to say what a pleasure it is sharing this incredible once-in-a-lifetime experience with you guys, and we've ended up the family. Yeah, and, and Martin, the one thing that you know, I valued above all with, with you being here is that I think you've been the, the rock for everyone to cling to. It's my pleasure.
You know, I don't have the energy, and the other guys have kind of helped me out a lot, and it made me really low. But you just have to keep plugging away. One little phrase my wife said to me before I left, and I would turn that over in my head, buckle up, man up. This place is built for a mature head. My maturity in dealing with being on the island was really important. Break open the champagne, that's what I say. <laughs> Guys, for one last time, I think it is time for bed. Do you know what we should have a group sing of? Do not sing gold. <laughs> yeah. Do not sing it. Gold. Always <laughs> believe in your soul. We got, got the, the power to know. know. You're indestructible. Always <laughs> believe in. Because we are gold. Gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's on fire duty tonight? Oh. Oh. the remaining cast members and man this island pushes people to their limits and for those seven celebrities still here it has truly been an extraordinary experience here it comes Halfway. <laughs> the thing is, this whole experience is never about how good your survival skills are. What's interesting is seeing whether we're when we're stripped of it all, whether we have that streak of steel. And I'm so proud of you, honestly. You should be so proud of yourselves. Respect. So well done. Put out the fire, guys. Okay. Having managed to keep the fire alight for the whole 28 days, it's now time to put it out. Well done, guys. She's out! Woo! Wow. Wow. Okay, guys, follow me. Get out of here. I can't believe we're actually going. So long, camp. Bye, now. Bye camp. Bye, Bye island. island. Oh, somebody push. Somebody push. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> It was great to have made it to the end. At the time, it was really slow, but now, boom, it's gone. I feel really good. The reality of it was much harder work than I ever imagined. To the 11 set from heaven, salute. Sometimes it was intensely horrible, and the thought of quitting did go through my mind but I stayed to see it through. I think it's been a really important experience for me and I'm really proud of doing that. I'm hopeful of not forgetting some of the lessons I've learned here. The fundamental thing is that I don't think any of us appreciate what we have in normal life. And so I think that's something I've got to learn to do is be thankful for the many good things and don't sweat the small stuff. I feel as humble and as tired and as accomplished as I've ever felt. It's weird, I feel very small, but very solid. Feast your eyes on that, home sweet home. I'm not even acting, that is so incredible to look at. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Are you all right, Eric? As the islanders return to the luxuries of civilization, the first thing they are reunited with is food. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Let's do it. It's the most succulent thing I've ever tasted. Yeah. And that's, I'm not shitting you, it's that good. Taste that watermelon. Yeah, nice and sweet. It's the one thing we haven't had on the island is, is sweetness. It's like the best thing I've ever tasted, apart from Joe's limpet stew. <laughs> <laughs> Unable to contact their loved ones for the last 28 days, the celebrities finally phone home. Mum? Mum? Show us me. 
me. Do you remember me? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm Errol. Hello. How's my favorite human being? Oh, my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> Ty! I did it! I did it! <laughs> I'm alive and I did it. <sighs> Fuck off, Mr. Mom. Emotional. I can't tell you, I've been waiting for this moment. Gosh, it's like, you know, you hold it all in and then get that. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I'm a 30 year old man, right? But I just want to cuddle for my mum and then. The thing about the island, those that endure, those that are there at the end, you can't buy your way there. These guys have learned about friendships and about tenacity, about keeping going and about facing a few fears and being courageous in the big moments. And the truth is those values matter so much more in life than any survival skills. But when you get there, there's that glint in the eye, that spirit that knows that when push came to shove, I've got a little core of steel. It's pretty damn impressive, and they should be really proud of themselves. Days, I marooned 10 celebrities on a remote Pacific island. Your brain is filled with adrenaline, not knowing really of what's ahead of you. Anyone with a machete needs to come to the front. Okay. <laughs> Stripped of their luxury lifestyles. He's got an eyeball and he's looking at me. They were left to fend for themselves with just the clothes on their back and a few basic tools. On Gower, you must own that chop down tree power. Oh my God! Yeah. Battling the forces of nature. Is it for real? I wanted to find out who had the grit and determination to survive. Oh, All I kept thinking was my tattoos aren't going to make sense anymore. Never, never, never give up. Ah. Pushed to the limits of human endurance. <laughs> I can't do this. Three of the celebrities quit. Bye, guys. I'll put the hands up. I just couldn't hack it. Tonight, I'll discover the full impact of island life. Oh, how delightful. Look at that. I felt like I was seeing like my dad's willy. What pushed the group to breaking point? Lord of the flies, Lord of the flies. We have work to do, Paris. Apparently, you don't have to do anything. It all happens. It magically appears. How they survived on a meat-free diet. Who is prepared to slit the pig's throat? That's one. It was just bizarre. I don't think I will ever see anything like this again. And what it felt like to finally leave. There's so no shit there. There's no part of that that anyone would choose to want to do, really. Stormy season on the island, yet again. It's raining. Four weeks ago, I marooned ten celebrities. This is it. Only seven remain. But it's always interesting to see what sort of state they're going to be in. Well done, you guys. Look at you. Amazing. Harder than you thought? Yes. Much, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> much harder. It's really hard to describe it, you know, until you're in it and you're covered in sandfly bites and you're tired, you're dehydrated, hungry and hurt. People don't know. So, well done. Well done. Thanks, man. Come on, then. Let's come and show me your camp. It is paradise, isn't it? Paradise. You, you won't believe what we've done with the place. So, Pete, you picked this area to make camp? 
Well, yeah, first day that we arrived on that beach, we sort of followed the coast down, and this seemed like a, a pretty good area based on the fact that it had a big clearing already. Yeah. So we could make quite a large camp, which we have done in the end. Mm -hmm. And then when we found the water source literally 100 yards away, mm -hmm. it seemed like the perfect place for us to stay. Guys, we ready? As soon as they set foot on dry land, Pete quickly established himself as a group's leader. We stick to the shoreline. Whoever's at the back, Ojo, just every now and then shout out so we're all in, in line, yeah? Oh, good. He led from the front. He was happy to go about food. He was happy to put the effort in. He was happy to go fishing every day. We put the nets out every day, so most days twice a day. He was happy to work hard, and I think that's really important for a leader. Go on, Pete. Yes! Oh, it's incredible, look at that. Because of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, it was nice for people to see a side where, well, actually, I do graft. I've grafted my whole life, and I'm not just a donut that falls out of my craft. I do do that quite a bit, but, you know, there's a little bit more to me. I can make a fire now. You ready for some stingray? Oh, my God! I feel like I'm going to cry! P was a hugely successful leader, and I think that he basically didn't ask anyone to do what he wasn't prepared to do himself, and he did more than everyone else. It's a bit soft and wobbly, that bit, but... It's slightly bent. It might be all right. I've had boyfriends that looked a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Under Pete's leadership, the group successfully set up camp and started a fire. Got any ember there? It's going to work. <laughs> We're good, we're good. Wow. Woo! Woo! Yes, boys! Well done. The people on this is, we're superhuman. You know, we, we literally, as a group, I say we, I don't feel like I contribute to that much, but as a group, I've never known anybody to establish themselves so effectively and so quickly. This is a good place, you know, you're in it. So sometimes when you're in it, you don't kind of see it, but actually you've got good cover, you've got good resource, you've got your water, you've got the sea, you've got your place where the nets are working, you're off the beach, you're away from high tide. This is a good, smart place to make a camp. Look how I found! A pang! Oh, my God! Well done, Harris. Well done. Well done. Well done. That is such a great find. Well done. Nice. The celebrities used anything they could find to make camp life a little more comfortable. That is going to be blinding, perfect pillow out of that. I'll make it like an orthopaedic pillow. Some more over there, I'm going to go get one. We would not have been able to survive there without plastic, without the bottles that are drifted up on the beach. Flip-flops, big plastic barrels, we wouldn't have been able to do it. I've been shopping on the beach. And I've got a comb, well, I've got two combs, that one's in better nick. Two toothbrushes, I mean, I don't know who belong to, but, I mean, beggars can't be choosers. What's that? Could be onto a winner. This would be good to use for the shelter, wouldn't it? <laughs> Fucking Captain Obvious. <laughs> I'm so happy. I was looking and I thought, what's that? Two bananas. I wouldn't even look twice at them if I was in Sainsbury's. That might make a nice conditioner for my hair. I always love to see beauty in nature. I just get very upset now we're destroying it, you know. And that was a sad thing for me on that island, was seeing that plastic, because there is no beauty in that. Well, every corner of the beach is just infiltrated with plastic. I know, it's unbelievable. And then one day it'll be clear, and then think you've done it, mm. and suddenly the next day, it's all back again. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it is one man's, one man's trash, another man's treasure. For you guys, it was useful, but it is shocking, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, shocking, yeah. Let's have a look at the shelter. This isn't our finest hour, the shelter. Has it worked well for you? Yeah, I mean, listen, everybody moaned about it because they said it was so uncomfortable. It did but a job, whenever though. whenever it rained, it was the first place that everybody yeah. went to. Yeah. I love making things with my hands. Uh, you know, I'm big on that at home, even, you know. So when it came to making things, even like making the shelters, when we first got there, I loved being in charge of that. What's interesting for me is that you guys are almost a bit embarrassed by it, but here's what I see, mm. is that when it comes to survival, this is about function, and working together and having a communal area that keeps you dry, keeps you off the ground, and good enough is good enough. Yeah.
Well, he looks a little bit dead. Poor sausage. But the brutal environment took its toll, especially the extreme weather conditions. Whoa. You could be lightheaded. So hot. A bit lightheaded. But each of these little treks mm. is getting harder and harder. I need to cool down. I need to go and wet my clothes in the sea or something because I'm just sweating. It's like trying to run a marathon in treacle. The heat and then the rain, you know, the two extremes, but not being able to escape from it. How are you doing, fish man? It's hot. It's too hot now. You're dressed in the right colour for heat, though. Dark trousers, dark T-shirt, a boot, dark hair, a beard and a dark hat. You'll be fine. <laughs> Why are you hot? Oh. The onset of tropical storm season and the dramatic changes in temperature tested the islanders' resolve. Ooh, look over there. That's, that's coming down. But, but behind it and in front of it, we're clear, so if you can just just get away from it, we're OK. So when the, when the first deluge hit, well, we thought we were prepared. <laughs> oh, my god. Oh, this is bullshit. Jesus. This is fucked. I've been a lot worse. <laughs> you tell me. I've been a lot worse today. <laughs> it's OK. Today. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just adapting to my environment with my scuba goggles, because that's how much water there is. There's so many mosquitoes everywhere. The tropical storms are horrible. They are unforgiving. They are relentless. We are all freezing, and um, it's not stopping. While some of the group could handle the conditions. I've never been out in rain like this. Whoa, it's coming down now. Woo! French hands. For Roxanne, it proved too much. Uh, oh, my god. Everybody's shit! I actually don't know where to start. I don't know where my pants are. Where are my pants? Is this for real? Oh, my Whoa. God! Come on! It don't mean like this in Manchester. Mentally, I broke. There's no hiding from it. Stop! <laughs> babe, babe! Yeah, come here. It's a twig. It's a twig. It's a twig. <laughs> After the weather conditions turned for me, that was when my state of mind did. <laughs> oh, God. Oopsie. After five days, Roxanne quit and left the island. Being an actor, I've always pushed things to the back and just played someone else. But being on this island, you strip bare to your own thoughts and feelings. You pushed to extreme. I thought I was made of strong stuff, but... Nothing stronger than the island. Roxanne leaving, what was that like? This is a hard place, as we, as we all know. So I don't begrudge her going at all. I think she needed to go home. I thought it was a real shame she went so early because uh, she would have given the group just a lot of fun. I was sad to see her go. Well, the island brings it all out. The irony is you probably would have found the best therapy by staying here. You know, you can't hide, you can't pretend. Oh, my God. I'm knackered. All right, more palm trees to cut. A month ago, I abandoned ten celebrities on a remote island in the Pacific. Do you mind, mate? I'm trying to have a little wee. Living in such close proximity left the islanders mentally and physically exposed. I wasn't a massive fan of the hygiene situation on the island. Couldn't wash my hair, got very matted. I think most of it's fallen out now. By the second week, everyone smells like shit. I actually smell horrible. I smell like dead cats and fajitas. We don't even have towels. I've just realised we don't even have towels to dry off. No. The hygiene over there, I mean, there, there, there was none, <laughs> really. I mean, to be honest, I, I just dealt with it. You got a little bit in that We'll get it out. Thanks. Oh, 
God, we've, we've, we've all got very close on this island. <laughs> oh, how delightful. Look at that. God, you got a bit of sun. His ass looks like the moon. <laughs> Full and white. For some, island life became a little too close. They'd walk around sometimes with their willies out. Oh, we've seen a snake. It's cold in there. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is how the Red Hot Chili Peppers used to play. I'm Anthony Kiedis. Wow. I felt like I was seeing, like, my dad's willy. He's over... Oh, God. He's bending over. This isn't what I want to see. It was vile. Where was your loo? In the sea. Always the sea. It was always en route to the sea. <laughs> <laughs> so was diarrhoea a big part of camp living? A few of us. Do you have okay. diarrhoea for, for I a month? I know I shit. Do I? And I, I certainly settle into routine fairly quickly of having the shits, that's for sure. Oh. I've got a belly full of fucking desiccated coconut. I and I can tell you now, it's not pretty. I know yeah. it's there, but I just keep holding it in, holding it in. I know I could go more if I wanted to. It just feel like rubbish. Listen, I had, I had the runs from day one to day 30. Oh, my head is throbbing. I think I might be dehydrated. Remember, that's all we've got now. Mm. One celebrity's struggle with the conditions caused tension within the group. Before we went on the island and we was all on the boat and all that, Paris said, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do that. And we got there and she did none of that. I'm ready to kill today. I was convinced that I was going to do really well in that situation. I'm good to see I'm tenacious. I've got a survival instinct. I'm going to be resourceful. I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. You get there. I was rubbish. I physically can't take another step. Oh, fuck, this is really fucking hard. Oh, fuck. You right? What's up, babe? It's just really hard, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I just thought I was going to be better than this. I just don't feel like I'm doing anything. I just feel so exhausted after today. I'm completely covered in sand. I feel like I've got a bit of, like, irritated skin on my arse. Everybody else getting yeah, chafing I'll in be places. A, it's literally, you could start a fire in my arse, crack. It's well, that dry. What's the new sweet? <laughs> <laughs> when eight or nine people are doing their job and one or two aren't, then it's going to cause frustration in the camp. Apparently, you can sit around and do fuck all. It's OK. You don't have to do anything. It all happens. It magically appears. There, there were a couple of moments on that island where people were cruel. I don't think I was as bad as maybe some people were making out, but I don't know. She needs to make her mind up whether she's staying or going. I think we've got to just accept that we're carrying her. You know, we're expecting her to do stuff. Just find that very frustrating. Yeah, I know it's frustrating. It is the survival of the fittest, and I kept thinking, Lord of the Flies, Lord of the Flies. Once you've been labelled as the weakest link, it's... Yeah, you know, rightly or wrongly, you know, I probably was the weakest thing, but once you've become labelled as that, it's almost impossible to shake that because every single thing that you do is interpreted through this frame of she's the lazy one. Well, I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Love you. Sorry. Another one bites the dust. If I could have given more physically, I absolutely would have done, and I, I just couldn't. I'll put my hands up. I just couldn't hack it. James, obviously it was difficult for you when Paris left. Talk me through that. My only regret with Paris is that she has been through I've got more in her life than, than anyone else here, and, and I didn't really understand her, but I don't regret having worked with someone who I think isn't helping the camp. I think it's totally valid. You know, you're, you've got to be honest in this, these sort of groups, and the only currency out here is hard work. Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, I can't be asked. So fucking dull. Quitting the island can be contagious, and for the younger celebrity, once the idea took hold, it became impossible to shake off. I want you to go. I know, but it's hard. I know it's hard, but that's the point, isn't it? And life is hard. Yeah. Your whole life is going to be about survival. 
Emotionally, I was really struggling when I left. I just, I'd had enough. So, Marlon, what's, what's going on then? You're going to go today? I think so, yeah. Nothing could persuade you to stay. What about if Crackers puts his cock in a sock again? That would make me want to go faster. <laughs> As soon as you get it in your head, it's like it's like a fire. It starts, it, it, it spreads like wildfire. And then as soon as that little glimmer and that little percent of you thinks, oh, I should, maybe I could go, that's it, you're gone. It was when I literally saw yours and Eric's fucking pubes sprouting out from your hands when you were clasping onto your bollocks and your dicks. So I was just like, nah. Well, it's a bit, well, listen, we've had to put up your pubes sprouting out from your bikini bones. All right? They're not don't that bad. It, don't make it, it's just us. <laughs> She was more than tough enough to see this experience through. And I, I really wanted her, for her, to get to the end of this and succeed. I only just thought I started to get to know her, and she's gone. I know. Oh, I could kick myself. I just wish I didn't leave. Once you lose it mentally, it's very hard reclaiming that, isn't it? Joe, what would you say to a young person coming on the island next time round? It is all in the mind. To set yourself a challenge and say, I'm staying to the end. That you have to do that. While the younger women quit early, the eldest quickly settled into island life. Come and We're see my kitchen. <laughs> I mean, this is fantastic, isn't it? It just shows how important it is having something you kind of feel is, is yeah. yours in your area. Yeah, it was good. Joe ruled it with this, didn't yeah. yeah. You like that sense of looking after people? Yeah, I that loved must, it. That was a kind of it's a that role, isn't it? That was my mother it? thing, yeah, coming Has out she been it. amazing? Queen of the jungle, our dog. Thanks, guys. That bit would be nice. And that go on, you have it. I'm going, you have it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, bellissimo. So I've always been a mothering person. So, for me to be mum was just obvious, really. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, come on, come on. Fuck's sake. I'm so worried. She was genuinely my jungle mum, and she always gave me hugs when, like, I was feeling down, and I really clicked with Jo. I thought she was amazing. Gina! What's that there? See anything? Look! Mangoes. You beauty! She found food out of nothing. I'm sure she could pick up a rock and find food under it. She was unbelievable. Rock oyster, knife out. Give me, give me a little good bit then. That's awesome. a good bit. Can you believe you and I are marooned on a deserted island and you're feeding me oysters? <laughs> <laughs> the oyster that me and Joe got is my first oyster, and I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying it'll be my last oyster as well. I just don't understand them. I don't, I don't, I don't get what is delicious about them. The consistency of it. Let's just, let's move on. Let's talk, let's, let's talk about something else. So when am I going to get a boner then? I don't know. When you see your wife. <laughs> That'll happen for sure, but it's an aphrodisiac, isn't it? Yeah, but I think if you to eat it as an aphrodisiac and you're there with looking at somebody you really fancy, then, then it works. <laughs> Get lost. Jo, I think, is one of my favourite people ever. She's just like, it's like she was down in a little world. Look at those rocks. So the aliens must have transported these here that they didn't need in Peru. They use levitation, you see. I'm a 100% believer. I'm just waiting for them to abduct me, take me across a quick, a quick spin, and put me back home. Joe is the anomaly of the island. Hey, this is the look. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, man. Beach life. Well, I think Joe could actually have, have just, just lived out her days there. She seemed absolutely fine for the entire time we were there. Good as gold. What's up, bad grandpa? Guys are literally a pair of golden globes. In every group, there's a maverick, and this time it was the oldest member of the camp. Good morning. And there he was, and his name is Eric. <laughs> <laughs> the fact he was prepared to stick it out and didn't moan about it, I really liked him for that. 
Ah. Oh, man. It's the shoes. Don't worry about it. Eric and Joe wouldn't have put themselves as young as the fittest, but they were two of the most determined people to see it through. And that is, I guess, what you have of, of life experience. One, two, three. It is quarter to four. How's he nice? Because of the sun. I'm a big baby. I'm a big, needy, expectant baby. <coughs> How are you feeling, Eric? I feel okay. How do you feel, baby? Yeah, I'm fine. One of the guys, what 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 was the actress name, Eliza, who I like so much? Colin, speak up. Who's Colin? Who's Colin? Martin. <laughs> Martin, speak up. He looks like a Colin to me. Martin, Colin. speak up. I really loved him. I love being around him after after about let's say for the last two days. <laughs> You say, ha, ha, yeah, you're dead, you're bleeding. There you go, Pete. Woo! On Gower, give me some of that chopped down tree power. Ah. Ah. Smashing it, Eric. What? I said we're smashing it. <laughs> yeah, we are, Pete. Wow, look at the size of these guys. Wow. Look at the size of these guys. I'm, I, I miss the weird old geezer. He's such a strange man that you, I think everyone needs an Eric in their life. One of the hardest things is going for a month with such limited calories. Has the hunger been a major issue? Yeah. The hunger's been hard, but I've really struggled physically with with the demands because I'm just, my body feels so weak, so weak. So, um, yeah, it has been tough for me. Especially as an athlete and James as well, you're used to, you're a big guy, you need a lot of calories. I think it's, it's more, as I was saying, the feeling of just everything slowing down for me rather than raging hunger. Cookies and cream, hagen dazs Apparently, your stomach is so small when you go back that you can't eat much. Well, watch me. That was one thing that really amazed me, was how much people talked about bloody food when you hadn't even got the stuff. Oh, my God, mashed potatoes. I'd rather a Solero about now, I'm being honest, or a Calippo. Oh, a Calippo! No, a white Magnum. I love a white Magnum when I'm in the bath. We're not in the bath now. I remember going, come on, stop talking about food, for God's sake. Why is that? That's just water, though, Calippo. You need something more. You yeah, need but... a cornetto. That's what you know. Everything comes back to food. So that wasn't much fun either. So when you're sitting there and you, you feel like shit, and then someone goes, oh, do you know what I fancy? I fancy a Krispy Kreme. Do ya? Do you really? Well, don't we all? You know what I mean? Like, that we used to really wind me up. All we did was talk about food. Do you know what I fancy? And I never really normally like them. Profiteroles. Oh. Or chocolate eclair. Oh, chocolate eclair, stop it. Salted caramel chocolate oh, eclair. With little chunks in it. Oh, mate. Actually, I'm saying that I moaned about food a lot. I should shut up. I can't blame everyone else for that. It's probably me. And Anthony. I'm going to blame Anthony, actually. Yeah, fuck him. Anthony's fault. He used to talk about food all the time. I'm blaming Anthony. Twist it. Oh, twist it. Oh, Nando's. Cheesecake. Oh. Beans on toast. Oh, a little bit of orange residue. Mop that up. Cheeky little pork rib. Oh. I'm not sure I want to eat that. It may not have been the food they were craving, but in a survival situation, every calorie counted, whatever its source. Come here. What are those? Can't read foreign. Where's the rest of your mates? Up that way, can we have directions to Crab fucking city? Because I'm fucking hungry. Don't worry, we got limpets by the score. Go on, girl. This is why you are the queen of the jungle. Right, who's in first? Soft and edible and disgusting. There's not really much you can do with a soggy limpet. It was necessity more than wanting to eat that. Fuck me. 
We've got a month of this. I won't be rooting around for any snails Olympics in the garden, you know what I mean? Hmm. Tastes like a rubber johnny. I think you've been doing it wrong, Joe. You're not supposed to chew them. <laughs> That's yeah. why he left. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just got the worst hunger pains. There's a lizard there. Just a small lizard, just a little thing like that. Where's the proper food then? Are the, the, the pigs in that? We'd catch a fish, which is about this big, and we'd be like, hurrah, yay, we've caught a fish, woo! Have you got ten more in there or what? No. We won it at the fair. Well, it'll be good in the stew. Well done. There's ten of us eating this tiny little fish, which we've had to make into a fish broth. So basically, you've got a cup of fishy water. Let's fucking go catch a cayman. How was my northern accent? Uh, terrible. Oh. I was going to ask what that was. I ensured the island had enough wildlife and vegetation for the celebrities to survive throughout. But only if they had the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. The whole meat thing, I, it was really frustrating. People were like, oh, I'm a vegetarian and I'm a vegan and I want to support the animals. You hear it? Yeah. Oh, that's the little, little sea ham, ham and crab thing. Oh, I thought it was a snake. I wanted to kill something. I know I might sound like a psychopath, but I'm not. We're not killing it for fun. We're killing it because we haven't eaten in six days. And I think that is a legitimate reason to kill an animal. I mean, there is a food chain here. So, you guys are also the first island group I think we've ever done that decided to be pescatarians. Yay! Talk me through that. Was that a good decision? How, how did that work out? I think I'll probably take responsibility for that. Obviously, I, I mean, I don't eat meat. I'm pescatarian anyway. It was a, a bit of a win, personally, for me. You know, and it was a little mission of mine. I knew I wasn't going to eat meat on the island, and it's not like I sit out to stop everyone else eating meat. You know, they, they could have well just told me to sod off and, and gone and done it. Piggy, 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 piggy. Hi. Pete's pescatarian principles caused division in the group when a potential food source appeared close to camp. Wee, 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 wee. The pig, it was friendly to us. It went through our stuff. It would, it would, it would smell everything. It would talk to us. It was a sweetie pie. Dinner time. You wish. There was just this pig with all these floppy ears and his little tail wagging and all that sort of stuff down the beach. And I thought, oh, instantly, my, my stomach sank because I thought, they're going to want to kill him. Hey, guys, she's in camp now. The fact that Colin was actually a beautiful little soul in a pig's body made it a lot easier for me to convince other people not to eat him. I think he's <laughs> sitting down because he knows it's a bunch of celebrities that don't eat meat. <laughs> I did think to myself, if I name him, you can't eat him. Colin. Colin. Look. Colin. Soon as he named him, we weren't going to eat him. Uh, we all knew that. that uh, well, I knew that. Hey, Pete's dead. What? Pete's dead. No, Colin's dead. Yeah. The pig hung itself. What, what, what? Yeah, the pig hung itself. Well, let's go. Even after the pig accidentally died, the group stuck to their decision not to eat it. You know, he's part of the camp now. You know, I wouldn't eat Eric if he died, so why should we eat Colin? When we put the pig on the raft and we pushed him away, and Pete was standing there looking like Jesus, saying a prayer over the top of him, I thought it was the funniest thing I'd seen since Life of Brian. And it was everything I could do to not look at somebody else in the eye, to laugh. It was one of the most bizarre moments I've ever been involved in and ever seen. I, think, I don't think I will ever see anything like this again. Truly kind of far out, man. Yeah, it is. And another twist is if, you know, Pete drowns. If they'd made the decision to eat the pig, I'd have left. Yeah, it was, it was just it was just an horrible time. Definitely the hardest part of the island for me.
Pete, you said it was your challenge for yourself. Yeah, to it, not eat, but it wasn't your challenge for everyone else. It's a difficult one, but you're imposing your views on other people. And actually, you might be able to survive on this, but this guy, this guy, he needs it. For me, it was like, we had a choice. We could have eaten a pig and been full for a couple of days, but I know that would have upset Pete. But what happens if Pete says, I don't want water? I don't want you having water, I'm going to get upset by it. Yeah, but water you have to have to survive. The pig, you didn't. What happens when you're not getting fish? What happens when you're getting weaker? I think At what level do you say, I really respect that, but we need, we need energy, we need to travel, we need to move, we need, you know, we can't do it. Yeah, but we all realised that the choice we had was that a half of us start to eat meat and cook it, or we split the group up. At the end of the day, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself to provide food non-stop throughout the time I was here, whether it be going out trying to find yucca, which we did, whether it be fish coming but from the But the thing nets. is, you didn't uh, find yucca. Uh, you found a tiny little bit of yucca, but this island, I know this island yeah. well, it is jammed with yeah. that. You had enough yucca within 200 metres of here to feed you fried meals all day, every day. But the truth is, you didn't do it because you didn't have the energy. And the truth is, you didn't have the energy because you weren't eating. As the celebrities battled with hunger, the lack of food started to take its toll. Martin had developed some really nasty sores on both legs. Out there, it became crippling. I still can't get my shoes back on today. This is the first time you had them on in three days? Yeah. I think, you know what it is? I think it's being here, not enough, no protein, no food dehydrated, your body just can't heal like it does. You know, it uh, hasn't got any goodness in it. Oh, that's a great line. Mm -hmm. I've got no goodness in me. It is. The trouble is on the island, if you get hurt, it doesn't get better. It literally gets worse to the point where I'm looking down at it thinking, hang on, I'm going to lose my leg because it's, it was starting literally to look like gangrene. So that's the National Island Service Health Centre. The, the NIS. Yeah. <laughs> Best doctor in the N NIS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. She was brilliant at that. She was everything. She was the, the doctor, the nurse, my mum, my therapist, everything. And she's a, just a lovely woman. One of the best in the NHS. Yeah. 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 Hand thighs, guys, cover up. Yeah. Everyone suffered the most horrific bites. I could just literally just hear them buzzing. It's just constantly itching. I feel like we all look like we've got fleas. Everything in this island just hurts you. Stabs you, scratches you, makes you bleed. Stabbed by a puffer fish, calluses, machete, machete, machete. Ah, <sighs> fuck. One of the celebrities kept Dr. Salia busier than most. Pete, he's given me some of my more memorable medical encounters. There you go, how's the hand? Let's have a look. It's strapped up at the minute. We think it's possible fracture. Possible, but it's healing nicely. Hey, what a cool, what a cool wound. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. that's not trapping it in the oven door, yeah. is it? It was just like this roar. The shark's got my finger! Shark. When you think shark, you think legs, you think arms, you think torso. <laughs> right. Amputation. Yeah, all I kept thinking was my tattoos aren't going to make sense anymore. I thought it was just going to, was just going to say Ost Soul. You know what I mean? And that would just, it wouldn't make any sense. I've got it! I'm out, I'm out! Oh, my God. It wasn't the biggest shark in the world, but the fucker had some grip. I could not get, it was like, it was like, it was like having your hand in a vice. But yeah, I genuinely thought I'd lost my finger. But it did break my finger. It's got lasting damage, I've got a bent pinky. Uh, and I don't really have any feeling in it. Wow! I know you do right with the girls already, but now you've got a legit shark attack scar. <laughs> Bloody hell. There's no stopping Pete Wicks. Um, I may have exaggerated um, the tale to a few people. It's much like when, when a man's talking about his length. You know, it's always a few inches longer than it actually is. At the end of the day, I'm a shark attack survivor. So, you know, I'm going to live off that probably for the rest of my life. I can't believe we're actually going. Oh, my God, Martin. We are going. After nearly a month 
I returned to the island to pick up the seven remaining survivors. Oh, it's not going to be pretty. Oh. Somebody push. Somebody push. Yeah. Thank you. Eric, yeah. move down a little bit for me, mate. I'm going to sit right here. OK, don't then. <laughs> At the end of the day, these guys aren't trained survivalists. They're celebrities who've been thrown in at the deep end. And I think what is most telling is the way they have lent on each other. And that's what's always, for me, so inspiring. You see this group of people rich in character. So long, Cam. Are we going? We're going, we're going. If you set your mind that actually this is something you're going to do, and there's nothing that's going to change me doing that, then you'll do it. And I think the people that survived it and the people that, that, that stayed in the end are all people that at no point had it in their head that they weren't going to finish it. Oh, my God! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Have I been dreaming of that? What a mad thing to do. It really is a mad thing to do, and I loved it. Age is merely a number. It's just a number. I'm so happy I did it. 28 days ago, a month ago. I know. It seems so long ago, doesn't it? It's hard. It's life. And I've learned to love my life, every aspect of it, because of this trip to this island. I learned I have everything. And I should never complain, ever. There you go, guys. Feast your eyes on that. Home sweet home. Wow. As the celebrities returned to civilization, they were finally able to talk to their loved ones. She you never answer the fucking phone. Oh, crazy. It's been a month, goddammit. Come on, answer your phone. All right, honey. Wow. I love you, I love you, I love you. That person, that person gets so close to you. They, they are you. 25 years with them. And uh, being away from her for 28 days was hell. It was really hard, but I loved every second. Swing in. Please answer. Can I you? I love you so much. I just had to keep my game face on all the way through the island. Uh, and put home and Shirley and my family to the back of my mind, and I, that was the only way I could survive. <sighs> that was a good phone call. So that was, yeah, it was just amazing. I can't, just can't wait to get on. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. You right? Being lonely quite a lot of time. It was nice just to know how much like I need her in my life to be happy. Well done, team. This is brilliant. Absolutely. As the group were reunited with food, Anthony waited for one last weigh-in. I want to see what I weigh and what I've lost. I'm a professional athlete. Everything's done to the nth degree. I'm going to wait five minutes. I've waited 28 days. I can wait five minutes for a grape. It's called mystical ball power. It's called mental strength. <laughs> Those grapes taste divine. Pineapple is even better. Oh, look, he's yeah, naked on the scales. Hailing from East Anglia, Anthony O'Gogo! Do you know what I'm actually speechless? Like, I was so hungry, so hungry. I was losing weight. I could feel, I could feel the pounds just dropping off me. I lost three stone altogether. I was so hungry. Taste that watermelon. Oh, my God. We are starting here in four weeks. Yeah. Well done, Anthony. Yeah. Well, at least you can enjoy your fruit now. Oh, bloody hell. You're eating a pineapple. No, do you want it? This is actually amazing, isn't it? Incredible. Whoa, fuck me. Once they'd eaten, the celebrities got their first look in a mirror for weeks. What the hell is this? God, I've got my cheekbones back. You're the only man that can just grow a natural goatee. Look at the state of me. I am Uncle Albert from Only Fools and Horses. I cannot believe how skinny I look like I did when I was 14. Why do you look clean and I look absolutely filthy? No, you looked like that when you came on. <laughs> 
Oh, oh man. Air conditioning. Look at this. Oh. That is what I've missed. Pillow. Fucking chairs. God, the bed! Yay! <laughs> I've got an erection looking at this bed. Oh, shampoo and conditioner. Oh, amazing. Mm. Oh, no. That was like having sex. This is it. Oh, oh my God. I think that's what the island probably taught me most. We're too worried about getting to the destination. We're not enjoying the journey. Ten celebrities arrived on the island. Woo! And for the seven that made it to the end, Come on! the experience had a profound effect. Bloody hell! Yeah, the time was fucking horrible. Everything is so shit there, and it is shit. There is no part of that that anyone would choose to want to do, really. We're losing the fire! Please send me home tomorrow. <laughs> you feel broken. Everything hurts, really, from throat to toe. It was hard. <sighs> You're dead, and this is a dream. I just need not to be here. You're trapped in your skin. This incessant itching is unbelievable. Everything in this fucking jungle wants to hurt you. Will you just leave, please? It's hard to describe unless you live it. When everything is stripped away and you're living like a caveman, literally with nothing, you have time to think. And it was the perfect rehab for appreciation. Amazing, that's dinner. Um, ah! right. My man. I did the island because I wanted to be part of a team. I wanted to you know, be involved in something bigger than just myself. What a beautiful day! I think from a survivor point of view, the fact that they made some strong decisions not to eat meat meant they suffered. There's just no getting away from that. But when you get there, there's that look of pride that each of the surviving seven celebrities have in spades. And it's that sort of glint in the eye, that sort of spirit that knows that when push came to shove, I've got a little core of steel, and they should be really proud of themselves. Right, so we all know what we're doing then, yeah? Yeah. Let's go! We were all a family, and no matter what anyone says about how we dealt with it or who did what on the island, we all experienced that together, and no one will ever understand what we all did apart from all of us. And that, that bond is something that you'll have for life. The Magnificent yeah. Seven, yeah? Let's do it! Yeah. Come on! I half want to do it again. <laughs>